Tell him, tell him, make him look, tell him, make it look good. I don't care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I lost some, I lost some weight, so I got I got oh, yeah. I got to get my belts fixed. I got I got two um, Christian Louis Vuitton belts and a Gucci belt that I need fixed. I keep losing weight. Get that in his school. I well, I tried to sell them and buy some some more, but they're too expensive. The belts cost like each like seven, six, seven hundred dollars each. So I just throw that away. What am I supposed to do? It's because you getting you getting in shape. I'm you getting in drill and just. Drill some of that. No, the one one of the, the Christian uh, Louis Vuitton belt, it don't have it don't have holes. It's like Velcro it flips on. Oh, they got hose. Oh, weird. Yeah, I got holes. You don't got no holes. No, I said you. Oh, see, you went that way. Yeah. I said you don't got holes. Like you don't know how to drill holes. No, no. <laughs> see, listen, listen, bro. I don't know if you uh, noticed, but they yeah. they they team up on me. All these guys make fun of me here every day. Man, do you think you never just whooped in their that, asses? Yeah. Do you think three guys who've never trained can team up on this guy? No, it's no. probably not gonna go so well. Thank you. They, this, as soon as I walked in, he making fun of my outfit, and then they chime in. These guys, I'm like, what? What is it? What, what, what is it about <laughs> me that you guys want to make fun of me every day? I'm I'm nice to all these guys. <laughs> I lift them all up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm cool with all of them. And then they just they just team up. Positive light in the room. Very positive. All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into this. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, leave leave all that in. All right. So if you guys have been watching this, you already know who's on the <laughs> podcast today. We have the one and only Ben Askren, ladies and gentlemen, on the Jackson Podcast, live and direct. And today's a very special day. We have uh, surpassed over 100,000 subscribers. So Rampage, congratulations oh, on one of the fastest great, growing oh, hey, sports and you. MMA shows. Ben, yeah. thanks for coming on and yeah, celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah appreciate you being no worries. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, before we jump into this, I do want to thank the audience, the community for rallying behind us. Um, Jackson, it's the number one men's jewelry brand in the world. We sell, you know, chains and bracelets and real gold, real silver quality products that people can wear to elevate their style, their confidence. And one of the main things we wanted to do, I'm sure you guys have heard this on the show. We wanted to have great conversations, authentic conversations with mm -hmm. legends like yourself. And that's why we did this show. You know, we're, we're a brand that really is, is centered around community and athletes and the culture of what we have. So I really am excited that it's been going so successfully, especially because Rampage is here. I know he's the main driver of this. So we Cap. we want to thank everybody uh, for supporting us. Now that we're at 100,000, we're definitely going to be trying to get you guys some of the biggest and best guests like we have here today. So let, let's jump right into this. Well, I was going to say, you got he's got this chain over here. And I remember from the early Pride days. You used used to wear the big chain. Did he make that for you all the way back then? No, no, no. Th th <laughs> those um, chains came from the hardware store. <laughs> and, and this one right here, I had my friend go get me a chain, and he brought me back a little bitty one. This is the one that I that I used to wear back in high school. Okay, and I wear the bigger one now. But you know what? This one I can wear this around um, every day because the, the bigger one you don't want to you don't want to walk too around. heavy. It's too heavy. You don't want to walk around. But this one I can I can wear. I can walk so around. Neck with. training or something. Make yeah, that's why, I think that's why my neck's so big. Mm -hmm. I got my neck is nineteen and a half inches. Really? I right. measured the other day because I got to buy a suit for my press conference. And they didn't have no, they didn't have yeah. no shirts for me. <laughs> yeah, I saw Shannon. You can't wear ties when your neck's that big. No, no, it sucks. So mm -hmm. uh, they, we, we trying to find one. You, you <laughs> let him post that photo of you, Shannon Briggs. What po what photo? He posted a photo of you in like a a, a suit shirt, like a dress collar. Oh, shirt. that's when we like was in dress. Saudi. We was in Saudi, and uh, <laughs> we was looking for uh, clothes. And he walked in the store with the same store. I think he was following me there. Shannon, is uh -oh. a, he's a weird guy. Yeah, he. I think he tried to do the Klitschko shit. And he was following me. Then I told him, I said, hey, look, I don't play this shit. I beat your ass in this month. <laughs> so so he, he was kind of cool. But he was trying to follow me, get, you know, get footage and, and yeah. uh, you know, troll me and shit. Because yeah. he, mm -hmm. he always be trying to promote fights. And, and there was no fight back then. He was just trying to get the fight. Yeah. So he followed me around um, Saudi. So how did you decide to do a boxing fight? I always wanted to box. Okay. And you never have? Never have. Not once? Not once. Wow, crazy. So I've done wrestling matches. Yep. I, and, I, you know, I've done jujitsu tournaments you did yeah a long time ago i don't remember that i know it's before it was before y'all knew who i was okay and right. then and then i've done a kickboxing fight in, okay. in japan and the only thing i haven't done is boxing so i do oh. all those arts but all right yeah yeah i mean speaking of boxing one thing i think a lot of the internet asked and we've asked our community and our questions is like why did jake choose you to box <laughs> and i kind of want to just dive i know right why i know this. why because yeah. i tweeted i know why jake chose you because i'm not a very good boxer you're a wrestler <laughs> Why? Why you? Why you? You're a great wrestler. Why you didn't? One of the best. Why you didn't just put that aside for a little bit and just train? Um, well, I did. Stand up? I'm talking even before the boxing match in MMA. Uh, well, you so you want? Well, I guess we had two hours, so I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> I did. Uh, you know, I did train stand up a lot. Um, and you know what? Uh, kind of ruined it for me. I watched that movie Concussion in 2016 on my flight to. I fought a Russian dude, and I said, "Holy shit! I probably shouldn't be sparring anymore." And I stopped sparring. Because I figure, like, 
why risk extra fights? So I still fought like three more times and then I thought I was going to retire and I retired and then I got traded. So I unretired like a year and a half later and I had three more fights, but I, I stopped sparring for like two years. Mm. So that was why. So I actually think, um, you know, and I, I didn't get hit much in my earlier career, uh, barely at all. And so I think my stand up was just fine. And then it stopped sparring and you kind of lose the timing and yeah. the, what's going on, you know? So that was probably, so I probably shouldn't have watched that fucking movie. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. You ever watched that movie? No, hell no. Oh, it's scary. Watch, yeah, I don't watch stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just getting back into sparring because I haven't been sparring yeah. for a while. And I'm I'm real sluggish and real yeah. rusty and stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to spar like three times a week. It's a timing thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's man. all about timing. And my defense is not as good as it used to be. Everything. You you got to keep it up if you're going to be in there fighting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so actually my thing, uh, when I, so I moved to Duke Rufus in 2011. Uh, I was belt or champ already at that point in time. My thing was, if I can take them down and they can't land clean shots, then I'm going to win easy because I was just better than everyone on the ground. So my thing was, uh, how do I penetrate their strikes? Right? How do I get past them without them landing clean shots? And we had a lot of really good strikers. You know, we had Anthony Pettis and Eric Koch and Mike Rhodes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I got to train with really good strikers on like an everyday basis. No, but you, yeah. he, he's bigger than I thought he was. I, I, I don't <laughs> yeah, think I, you, you thought he was a, a lightweight. Yeah, a I, thought lighter he, yeah I thought he was a little bit smaller. What, what, That's what everyone says. Yeah, what weight did you always fight at? 170. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty big for a 70. You probably cut it um, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of big for 170. So I wrestled 174 in college. Um, what? Yeah, 170 is a good weight class for me. Yeah. Told you, he's not a small guy. Because if he was wrestling 174 in college, I mean, he was walking around like 200 pounds. Well, I would get, I would get fat in the offseason. But, so what, uh, what was you walking around in? Like 200 in the offseason. But yeah. then I, I would get lean. I would get a lot smaller during the season. Yeah. That's why my son wanted to fight 55 because big guys like him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we looked at the, the the lineup and we were talking about this earlier in terms of boxing because you've been mixing it up with Luke and Congo and everybody. And I just, I just for the life of me, like, you know, this guy's career, Jake Paul was on this like superstar, like media outlook and he challenges mm -hmm. you. And then you tweet at this guy that what he yeah. sucks. Would you know well, it was a. Uh, I think I just tweeted something about Nate Robinson sucking because, oh, you know, at that it. point he fought, I think he fought a comedian and a, a basketball player. And so my thing is like, okay, I, 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 mean, I had no intention of fighting him initially, right? It was, I just tweeted like everyone does sometimes, right? Um, and then they call me and they're like, hey, you want to fight? I'm like, eh, I don't know. Kind of sounds fun. <laughs> kind of sounds fun. You know, you like fighting. I like yeah, fighting. Yeah. Kind of sounds fun. But I had my hip surgery, so I had, I literally had done zero exercise in like four months, so mm. I was fat as shit. Mm. Um, so I called my doctor. I got clearance from my doctor to start training again and started training, and I was just hoping he sucked. Here, I kind of figured he's probably not very good. I'll be able to weather the storm for a round or two. He'll get tired, then I'll beat him up. Now, obviously, since that point in time, he's beat Anderson Silva and he beat Tyron. Uh, he beat a professional boxer. He's fighting another professional boxer. He's actually kind of good at it, which yeah. – it's unfortunate. Probably yeah. most unfortunate for me. It surprised you, huh? Yeah. Did he hit hard, you think? Uh I mean, I don't know. I don't like it's I don't know if you thought this about fighting, but like, so I got obviously got rocked and then I got up and they didn't let me continue. But I like didn't feel it. Yeah, yeah. I you don't, don't yeah, you don't, you don't feel, feel it. it. Yeah, yeah, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I look at it though, and a lot of the interviews that you put out even before and, and then we'll kind of jump from this is that you basically were just saying, well. You know, my theory is that he's probably not as good as me. Like you yeah. said it multiple times in interviews. Like, didn't yeah. you ever think to like watch some tape and see, or do you not think that? Well, he just hadn't fought anyone good. Got so it. it was like, we don't know. We don't know. And then um, there's also this thing in fighting, wrestling, where someone might have good skills, but if they're in a real fight, they can't handle it, right? They're not tough enough. They, will, they wilt when the pressure gets hard. Got it. And so it's kind of one of those things. Like I thought, you know, I... You know, I'll be able to weather the storm, won't get hurt. And then once he gets tired, I'll be able to Got do it. enough to win the fight type of thing. And, you know, the, I guess the other thing, too, is, like, I kind of figured, hey, if he's really good, he's probably going to beat me. Like, yeah. if he is. Um, and the other thing I thought when when they called and asked me was, you know, back in high school, um, if me and my friends didn't have anything fun going on on a Friday night, we'd go to my house and we'd all, all box. We'd be like, okay, you fight you and you fight you. Like, we did that for free and I thought it was fun. So, like... I don't know. I kind of had a good time. I wish I would have won, obviously. But training for the fight and the buildup was was a lot of fun. And then, unfortunately, like I said, unfortunately, he was actually good at boxing. Would you ever do any other boxing matches? Would you put work no, in and I train? Suck. You wouldn't. I suck. You don't want to put training. No. You retired now, huh? Yeah, I want to wrestle. I would. I told him I would. If if anyone actually had like professional wrestling matches, I would actually wrestle because I'm doing that every single day. 
Uh, but I don't think I'll ever do anything else. Once, once you hot that Josh Barnett, he got a um, new uh, catch port. wrestling. No, it's man, whatever. I forgot what it's called. He sent me a, a video oh, really? of it. Oh man, it's dope. He wanted he wanted me to come out there and do something in Japan, but I can't. I can't. Oh, professional wrestling. It's professional oh. wrestling, but it's different. It's like Japanese. It's different. I've never seen this type of wrestling. Really, it's on a um, big square platform, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it looks kind of like MMA. Well, are they actually trying, or is it like? Uh... I, I think it's pro wrestling. Okay, but it looks real. Yeah, I'm serious. It's dope. Holler at him. Okay. See, see, have them see. I, yeah. Later, I'll show you a clip and see if it's something you're into. Okay. But it's, cool. I think it's fun. Yeah. Did, did you and Jake ever end on good terms or no? When no, I kind of just uh, just left it. I just left. It's over. I just walked out and I left. You got your then, bag and just said, fuck it. Yeah, yeah that's it. I, I went back to my normal life, right? I got a normal life. My, I told him, my brother and I, we own seven wrestling academies. That's what we love to do. Uh, I got this nice life. And so I, I just went back to my normal life. Yeah. 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 It's, it's cool, though, that you were willing to take the challenge. I know a lot of people yeah. give you, give you uh, you know, yeah. a lot of heat for that. But at least you were willing to step in there. No one will fight this kid because Jake's good. I mean, like he said, Jake's you, a good yeah. boxer. You, see, you so. see how he's talking up Jake, him and Jake, good friends. <laughs> he FaceTimes Jake every time somebody say something bad about Jake. He'll FaceTime Jake. Why are you, why are you? Hold, you, hold on. MMA? I've been, no, no, no. I'm showing him respect because I'm saying no other MMA fighter. You want to fight Jake? Tyron fought him. What's y'all doing in my mic? I'm going to kicking y'all motherfuckers. Yo, yo. Wait, did they mute? Did they mute you? We didn't mute you. Did we mute him? See, I ain't touched motherfucker. Yeah, I can't, I hear, can't him. hear him. Yeah, see? Hold uh -oh. on. Hold on. Time yeah. out. I think they probably muted you. Time out. Time out. Okay, I hear it now. Yeah, he oh, I didn't touch the motherfucker. See, they no, doing no it. one muted you. You unplugged the mic. That's what you get for coming at me. Did you, see me did you see me touch the mic? Hey, you know what? Jake somehow beat Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva's like a legit, really good striker. And he had the win over Julio Cesar Chavez. I'm giving him like, this. Listen, I don't no love it. Wants, I was you want to step in there with Jake Paul? I, Hell yeah. I, I want don't. Jake to suck. I wanted Jake to suck no, more than don't. anyone. But unfortunately, he doesn't suck. He's mad at you. You you don't think I can beat Jake? I didn't say in I don't think. I don't think. Set I didn't up. say that. I can beat, I'm resting. I can beat Jake right now. I can beat Jake today. In but boxing. he's kind of big. Today. He's kind of big, right? Today. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm you, like, you I'm like two forty five, two fifty. Nah, I want to see you beat up Shannon Briggs, and then we'll figure. Yeah, out. I'm just saying, don't, don't come here and try to say I can't take Jake. I didn't say that. You said that. You just said that. He said that. He said that. I said that. No, I said you don't want to fight him because you. you're working on Shannon Briggs. We're, right, One but, fight but, at but don't time. say, don't say I can't beat Jake. I didn't say that. When Jake, when Jake fought you, that's when I got mad at Jake. Why? Because he's 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 fighting MMA guys who are wrestlers, and I I didn't like that. Like, don't come from my don't come from my sport. MMA is my sport. That. He said, "Don't come from my boy like that." He said, yeah. "That's my guy." Yeah, you guys are all one brotherhood. He did yeah. say that. We all comrades. MMA yeah. guys. We the well, tough guys. He was friend. trying to he was trying to build it up as like a Jake versus MMA type thing, which I always thought was super weird. Uh, it really was. Why? Why? I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. He was like, I think he was trying to get the boxing community behind him or something. But he was trying to like say he represented boxing and we represent MMA. What's like. I don't represent shit, Jake. I'm just trying to fight you in a boxing match, and that's it. It's like, I just want to get paid. Yeah. yeah. I'm out of here. It was, yeah. a, it was a big yeah. bag. You got paid good? I got paid well, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nicer if I would have won, obviously, but- yeah. uh, It was more- You got paid more if you won? No, I oh, didn't. Oh, okay, okay. No, it's just one set. No, I just- I don't like losing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who likes losing? Who won Nobody. You don't Barry, know Barry don't want to like losing, because look at his mustache. Every day he walk out of the house with that mustache, <laughs> he's losing. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, okay. I got, I got something for you. Yeah, that's payback. I got something for that's you. payback for saying, that payback? for saying Jake. I don't want to see Jake in the ring. That's your do boy. You, do you get what I was trying to explain to him? I'm yeah, just saying think, he has a fight right now. But he's very big, so I think he probably win. No, no of Jake course he's like, yes, because he's very large. Listen, Jake's a phenomenal boxer. Rampage is a world champion. Rampage would destroy the guy probably in a boxing fight. I'm not saying he, he also would. has 50 pounds on him. But he also yeah, has Jake, 100 pounds. Jake, Jake would be faster He'd than me. probably have 200 pounds on Jake. 200? Yeah, at least. Wow, that's rude. That's rude. He's calling you fat now. Yeah, he's calling me fat. That was that was a, that was a um, body Ouch. shame right there. Yes, I'm I, I'm losing weight. It's coming. What out. weight are you fighting, Shannon Briggs at heavyweight? Yeah, I'd be probably like two two thirty, two twenty five okay. by the time that fight. He comes. looked like Rocky Balboa last week. He was sparring with Luke Congo. He did. He brought in his own sparring partners. I was impressed. I, I'll give you that on camera. I'll give you that. First day I've seen him. He did like five rounds with everybody. Okay. Full camp, healthy eating. But then Friday night he was out at the fights with Nate Diaz, and I saw him turn up. I said, "All right, wait, back what to fight? This. Oh, this is back to the UFC a couple weeks back? No, no, it was some fights in LA, the Commerce Casino oh, this weekend. Okay. Nate, Nate was there. He's back at the fights. He loves it again. I took some friends. I took some friends to, to watch. What was it? Was it just small oh, what, small Next, time show? It's called Next or something. I don't know that one. I don't know that. It's one. like these uh, like new pro leagues oh, that are popping it. up. It's like amateur and pro the same. Night, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's cool though, to see him back at the fights because he's mm -hmm. he's falling in love again with the sport of MMA. So it's cool yeah. to see him there. I mean, the fans fun. love it.
you know, champion in two different promotions. You have, you know, so many athletic accomplishments. Mm -hmm. What do you consider like your greatest athletic accomplishment? Uh, I would say uh, two Hodge trophies. That's the award for the best college wrestler every year. So I won that in 2006 and seven. I'd probably, probably say that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's probably one of the hardest yeah. things to do. And then you did it twice. Yeah. And that, that was kind of something that was always a goal of mine to be the best of anyone. And I got it twice. So well, yeah. Well, how were you when you first started wrestling? Um, I was like probably five or six. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you know, every like, uh, we have little kids' classes at our place. Um, I would say I didn't really like it, like it, like it until I was like 11. Then I was kind of when I started clicking that, like, I like this and I tried harder. And then I'm like, oh, I could probably be good at this if I like keep trying, you know? That was kind of my path. Your, your dad must have been a wrestler. He was a wrestler, high school wrestler, not not a lot of success or anything. You know, it's not like he went to college or, you know, one state or anything like that. See, I wish my, my parents would have put me in, in um, sports when I was a kid. I remember my dad used to try to make me play baseball. I thought you did wrestle. Yeah, when I was 17. Oh, I started it. late. Got it. It changed my life, though. I was, yeah. by the time I changed my life, I was uh, 17 years old, freshman. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. I, I, <laughs> I almost fucked up my life. Then <laughs> rest, I started wrestling because I thought it was pro wrestling. Oh, really? Because the part of town I was from, we didn't have no wrestling in school. Yeah. Then my mom remarried. We moved to a different part of Memphis, and then mm -hmm. the school had wrestling. I was like, wrestling? Is that pro wrestling? And yeah. I went and tried it out. It was, Boom. It was collegiate. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, yeah, I was telling you about our wrestling academies yeah. earlier. Um, and that's the thing, I think the great thing about wrestling is most parents know exactly what they're getting out of it. They bring their kid, they want their kid to learn how to work hard, learn how to have some discipline, and be a little tougher. Like those like simple things that you want your kids to have. Uh, and I think most parents just, that's the expect, expectation they have when they bring their kids to wrestling. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool. Did you have the six academies before you fought Jake? Before you did all um, that? Or is this after? Let's see. So we started our first one in 2011. 2011, 13, 17, and I told you we did two in 2020, and that was like, we literally started two academies on March 1, 2020, and then the world shut down on March 13, so that was that was terrible, right? It's 12 days after we opened, we have to literally close the oh, doors. Yeah. That freaking sucked. Um, Why didn't you just sneak it? Why didn't you just sneak it? Like, well, on. we <laughs> waited like, uh, so what we did, we, uh, we didn't close for that long. It was not like California. You guys were crazy out here. Yeah. We did seven weeks closed, and then we said our college guys had nowhere to train. So we almost said, said okay, well, any of our college guys who want to show up and just train, we'll just show up and train. Uh, and then on June 1, we just started, we opened up again. Yeah, yeah but we didn't advertise nothing. We yeah. just put an email out and said, hey, we're starting practices. If you want to show up? And everyone freaking showed up. And it was actually crazy because that summer, there was no other sports. So our classes were like more full than anything because the parents were like, I just need to get these fucking kids out of the house. I need to get them doing something, you yeah. know? Like they can't play baseball or any other sports. Like I'll get them to wrestling. What's, uh, what's, um, what's the name of your um, wrestling academy? Askren Wrestling Academies. What? Askren Wrestling Academies. Oh my God, I thought you said something else. What'd you what did you say? I thought you said Assholes Wrestling <laughs> Academy. I'm like, come on, man. You breeding that a bunch would, of that assholes. That would be a weird right? name. I know. I'm yeah. like, I, bro, you fucked me up. That's why. I asked. Uh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. Askren. That's, that's what you thought. Yeah, that's, I, I really, that's what you yeah. thought he said. Hey, no cap. Yeah, no cap. I, I was like, yeah. okay, well, that's yeah. a weird flex, but okay. Yeah. No, but now, now that you have six of them, you're breeding some of the best talent, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, have... and there's no place for these kids to go after college, right? Most of yeah, them you're kind of put them. off by this, that there's, there's no professional wrestling league at this point. Yeah, it kills me. But there's, uh, you know, Olympics. The, yeah, the Olympics and college wrestling is yeah. college wrestling is really big. Um, you know, you can watch a lot of it on TV now, where yeah. you, you couldn't say ten or fifteen years ago. Um, so college wrestling is really, you know, we have a lot of guys wrestling. We have two guys who are number one in the country right now in Division One wrestling. Uh, we have the NCAA is coming up in like three weeks in Kansas City. So uh, going down there, I'm really excited for that. And these kids, they're not signed to you or anything, right? They just train no. with you and then they go to college and yeah. do their thing. Yeah. yeah There's no money in wrestling. That's what you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. But it's money in, in, in these wrestling um, academies. Like they they, they yeah. pay to come and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. it makes them better wrestlers. Yes. Because yeah. I remember um, when I was wrestling in um, in um, Tennessee, some of my friends like uh, Chris Eubank and stuff like that. One of my, my childhood um, friends, he mm -hmm. used to tell me he used to go to wrestling camps. I'm like, man, I want to go to wrestling camps. I used to ask my mom, hey, mom, I'm going to go to wrestling camp. She said, how much it costs? I told her $250. She <laughs> said, shit, you better wrestle your ass in this living room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah back then, uh, I don't, you probably older than me by a few years. Hey, right, um, what you trying to say? I'm trying to think well, how old Why you is are. he looking uh, older? Well, I was it, it, back in that day, there was no like. Back in that day, huh? Whoa. Uh, looking older back in that day. Back in that day. Uh, I'm 45 years old. Hello. Okay, so you're only six years older than me. God damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, I actually was going to guess more. I was going to guess 47 or 48. Wow. But, I mean, you look young. Wow. Yeah. This guy's yeah. feeling himself today. <laughs> but there was no wrestling academy. So we were the first one. When we opened in 2011, we went year round. Yeah. At that point, there was no one that went year round. And so, like, when I was in high school, there was, like, one that was, like, three months. And that was it. Yeah. You know, and then the college would host camps and stuff like that. But there wasn't really anywhere to, like, train all the time. Where, where, where's your academies at? So, Alvamore, Wisconsin. That's where. Uh, oh. Yeah, we grew up there. And then I was gone. I went to Mizzou. Uh, and then I lived in Arizona for two years. And then went back home. Back to West. You yeah. know why? There's so many wrestling camps out there, right? Right. Ain't uh, shit to do in Wisconsin. There's, there's not shit to do. Ain't shit to do in Wisconsin. Have you ever been to Wisconsin? I went to a Green Bay game one time. Oh, for real? Damn. Yeah. How was that? Really? Why'd you go? Green Bay? Yeah. Green Bay, Wisconsin. But you just want you just wanted to go because you like the Packers? Oh, I, li- I like Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Lambo Leap, do the whole thing, call yeah. it a day. Have yeah. you been to the Green Bay game? I've been to a couple. Yeah. I'm not a huge I'm kind of just watch wrestling and MMA and that's it. That's it. You just yeah. you just that's you it. just all about wrestling. I'm just a simple man. Yeah. What, simple but man. what got you to uh, be a fighter though? What uh so I graduated uh college in two thousand seven. I wrestled in the Olympics two thousand eight. You wrestled in the Olympics two thousand eight? Yeah. And there was no mo- but there was no money in it. I mean now, so I, I say there's no money in wrestling, but like now the very best guys in America, you know, your David Taylor, Kyle Dake, Jordan Burroughs, they're making, they're not rich, rich, but they're making good money. Like they're making money they could be happy to live on, right? And they get to do what they love. Um, in 2008, there was like no money. Like I was poor, you know? And I said, well, I don't want to be poor forever. And I was watching a whole bunch of my friends go start fighting. And I thought, hey, that looks like fun. Maybe I'll go try that. And so after the 2008 Olympics, I figured I would try it. If I was if I sucked at it or I didn't like it, I would go back to wrestling for 2012. And if I I was good at it, then I would just keep doing it. And I won a belt or title in like 18 months, and so I just stuck with it. Oh wow! Yeah. So so what do you think about Triple C, um, Henry? What, well, I love Henry. Is he, what would you rate his wrestling? He's a gold medalist. Uh, right? He's an Olympic gold medalist. So he was on the same Olympic team with me in 2008. You were, uh, you trained with him? Not I mean a, a little bit, not really. You know, he was training uh, out of the Olympic Training Center at that point in time, and I was in Missouri. Uh, you know, we did camps and stuff together. Uh, his wrestling was awesome. And then, you know, he stuck around. He kind of waited to make the MMA transition because he was, like, considering doing it for a while there, but then kind of wrestled also. So he wrestled in the 2012 Olympic trials, and then I went to fighting after that. Mm. Yeah, but now he's talking about fighting. I don't know if you saw this. He's talking about fighting Brandon Moreno. Yeah. The Battle of Mexico or something. Yeah, yeah. They called him a fake Mexican after the Brandon Moreno battle, the feud. Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. So now That's they, crazy. Now they now he wants the battle. Now he actually wants to fight. Because they were friends, you know? They were and, friends, yeah. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. One one thing I don't want to pass on because I just you just brought it to my attention. When you were at Mizzou, mm-hmm. one of the coolest stories I think that needs to be like a documentary is that you, Tyrone Woodley, and Michael Chandler were all on the wrestling yeah. team together and mm-hmm. all friends and all trained together. Yeah. Can you explain this dynamic, how this happened, and what, yeah. what went down? Um, well, I think it kind of is, uh, at that in that era, there was kind of a lot of wrestling teams that had a lot of guys go be you know high-level fighters. So, you mm-hmm. know, say Arizona State, you had Ryan Bader, C.B. Dalloway, Aaron Simpson. Uh, I love C.B. Dalloway. Kellen Flukinger, Kane Velasquez. I mean, that's oh, on, like, yeah. one group of guys. Mm-hmm. Um so there's multiple teams that kind of did that. And actually, so Tyron, me and him made our professional debut on the same card on the same night, but he had seven amateur fights prior to, mm. and I just said, skip the amateur shit either. I'm going to figure out if I'm good or not. So, you want to strike the pro? Yeah. I was like, listen, if I can't beat up these guys who aren't very good, then I don't deserve to do this. So skip all the amateur <laughs> Damn, bullshit. Just went straight to it. Well, yeah, that's why I figured it's all like. It's to make sense why you took the Jake Paul fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to waste my time if I'm not good at it. I want to figure out I'm not good at it and then I'm going to move on, you know? That's a big risk, though. You can find out if you're good at it or not by doing amateur. No, I want. I said, just put me right in the pros. So I fought, I mean, I fought someone who was like, I think five and five the first one and someone who was like six and four the second one. Like, they were all right. You know, they weren't very good. And I smashed them quick and then I moved on. Have yeah. you ever fought a good wrestler? Um,. I, no, no one on my level. So, like, I fought Jay Haran. He was a division one wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy, Ryan Thomas, was a division one wrestler. But they weren't, like, you know, all-American type wrestlers. So they were, like, yeah. good wrestlers, but not great. Mm-hmm. So was the dynamic, were you guys all friends in college? Yeah, we were all friends. Um, this, so Tyron was doing the amateur fights, and then we fought and started at the same time. He had moved on to – he so he coached with us for a couple years, and I want to say he took a job at – Edwardsville, Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, maybe. And then he had started his gym in St. Louis and he was training out of there. Um, and then Michael is two years younger than us, I think. So he didn't graduate till, I want to say 2009. Actually, funny enough, 
the, the day after Michael Chandler graduated, um, so I would have had maybe one fight at this time, maybe two. TJ Grant, I don't know if you guys remember him. He was uh, he won seven fights in a row. He was actually going to fight for a title uh, at 155, and he had concussion problems, mm. um, and he retired. So he, he retired on a seven-fight win streak in the UFC. Anyways, he paid us, um, me and Michael, to come train with him in early 2009. So it was literally like the day after Michael graduated, uh, you know, finished his college wrestling career. We were going to, I think we went to Halifax or something because he paid us to come up there and train with him. Um, so Michael knew he wanted, he, wanted, he wanted to fight right away. And then I want to say he, he might have skipped amateurs also. I want to say he had a pro fight within like three months of, you know, college wrestling. Wow. Mm. Yeah, like, like fast, fast. Did any of you guys dorm with each other? Or were you guys friends um, going out? Any, any like college stories? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, we were all very close on that. The college team, everyone's really, really tight. Um, yeah, I mean, I sure that's like 50 funny stories of those guys. Um, How was Woodley with you guys? He was hilarious. He, I mean, he still is hilarious, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he's just a funny guy who makes you laugh all the time. Um, let's see, is any really funny tyrant stories? Not, I probably, would, I probably don't want to tell anyone. No, no, you don't want to tell. They're yeah, probably yeah. too inappropriate. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a, this yeah. is a. This I, is the a first one show. that came to my mind, I'm like, oh, I can't tell that. What did it revolve around? Wedges. If you say wedges to him, he'll know. Like girl wedges. Like no, just wedges. just ask Tyron about wedges. Yeah, that might be. I might have to call him. Hold on, I might have to put him on. The phone. <laughs> oh my god. And what about what about Chandler? I heard a story of you and Chandler went into some gym. There was a bunch of like young scrubs, and you guys went in there and mopped up everybody, and then you went to go eat and made them pay for the drinks. Is that true? What? Yeah. No, I don't remember this. I was actually thinking, you know, I was thinking, I, <laughs> I, just, I was looking at my legs to see if I still have a scar. So I was thinking in 2008, when I was training for the Olympic team, um, I took like 10 guys out to Colorado. Okay. I wanted to do like a training camp, you know? Um, actually, I don't know if you were there, but I, I was just thinking about this. Uh, well, I, it's kind of, now I'm getting all these stories at one time, but I was watching you guys, Ken Shamrock interview. Oh. And uh, oh my gosh, oh, ask yeah. him about, why has he got a mask on? I'm at the hospital real quick. Oh, oh, ask are? him about wedges. Yeah, I'm good. My mom, my mom and the money. Uh oh. You said what? You on the Jackson podcast live with Ben Asker, and we talking about Missouri and the greatest wrestlers I, that I, ever come out of there. I didn't want to tell any 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 appropriate stories, Tyron, but the first one that came to my mind when he asked you about funny stories about you was wedges. I mean, that's college day. You can drop the bomb on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Woodley's are all ain't really me. It's really uh, Pale. Yeah. It's really our dog, Matt Pale, who shows the potato wedges over the little hot and ready we had. <laughs> and I ain't talking about the What? <laughs> yeah, you see, he a menace. Yeah. Uh, I see. He's been a menace for years, huh? I, 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 for a long time, I was leading them astray, but I came back around, you know, gave back in and sold into them with some good positive vibes. But oh my God. I was teaching um, our wrestlers how to pick up women because they were they know the gymnasts, and our gymnasts were not hot. <laughs> oh, oh, we should oh, say that on, oh, on public uh, oh, hey, podcast right now. Woodley don't care. Well, you, well, that you, was so rude. Were you dating dogs in college, bro? No, not me. Oh, okay. Hey, Woodley, we I love you. Was, I never done. Oh, did I we date out. a gymnast? I don't think I did. I would so, like gymnasts, though. I'll tell the story, uh, and you'll get the gist of it. I won't say. I won't use the exact verbiage the juice that Tyron you. used. Hmm. So we did this camp in Milledgeville, Georgia, every summer, kind of like college camps. And so we'd all go there. The whole team would go there in some vans. And everyone always went out and got nuts, right? And so Tyron and our friend Matt Pell, who was, he was so insane. Um, they pick up these two girls and they're going home and with the girls. You know what I'm talking about? You look at me funny. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they stop at this gas station and Matt goes in and he's in there forever. And Tyron's like, what is he doing in there? Like, we're, try- we're trying to go home. What is- what's he doing in there? And Matt was in there raging because they said they had potato wedges, but there weren't any potato wedges. So he wanted potato wedges. So he was raging because they wouldn't give him potato wedges. And Tyron's like, so Tyron goes in there. He's like, Matt, can, can we go? And he's like, no, I want wedges. And Tyron's like, wedges or girls? Wedges. <laughs> and he couldn't get Matt to leave because Matt wanted the potato wedges. Bro, what? this guy, this guy is a complete menace. I went to a, a party with Tyron and it was uh, like, Eight years ago, it was Dan Bilzerian's house. Mm. Tyron and Woodley's running around the house, and at first, everybody was looking at him, and someone was like, oh, that's Mike Tyson. And he's like, I ain't Mike Tyson. And he had, like, a little beard, and the girl, like, turned around. The girl was drunk, and literally, Dan Bilzerian looks, and he's like, no, that's that's Tyrone Woodley. And then Tyrone Woodley's running around the house, and I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, nah, nothing. This girl keeps calling me Mike Tyson. And he's, like, hanging out in the corner by the pool by himself. I'm like, yo, what's good? 
He's like, no, nah, I got to train in the morning. This girl keeps calling Mike Tyson, so I got to get out of be here. Be honest, though. Be honest. Yeah. Was he the only black guy at the party? Who? Tyron. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> be honest. I can't, I can't. No. Was no. he the only black guy at the party? No, no. Well, but why is she calling him Mike Tyson? Because he was shadow boxing by the uh, front door. Oh, that's that's I believe it. That, yeah. Okay, that's what I think of. I was going to yeah. tell you. Yeah, I was gonna, it was, oh, well, I was yeah. going to tell you the Chandler story, too, because I was thinking about this. Because did you know this guy was a professional paintballer? Yeah. I didn't know there was such a thing. But <laughs> so in 2000, I didn't know until I met him. 2008, I took a whole bunch of Missouri wrestlers out to Colorado to do like a training camp. Um, and we were just trying to do, you know, we train twice a day, but then we do some fun stuff. So we had, uh, we had paintball stuff. Oh, nice. And so in the one game, him and I were the last two in, right? And there was this big ass bush and I was on one side and he was on the other. And we were trying to circle around and shoot the other, you know, like yeah. trying to get him. Yeah. And he got me right in the leg and I had a scar there for like two years because he shot me from like Two feet away in the uh, I know, right? Andre Drummond, the basketball player, yeah. he did that to Rampage. Rampage yeah. almost killed him. Oh, oh, my God. Who was those guys? Andre Drummond, he's a basketball player. He's hey, the hey, nicest you guy know in the world. No, this is the craziest thing. This is the craziest thing. The nicest guy in the no, world. No, no, this is the craziest thing. I was thinking about that the other day because- some, He shot you? He, yeah, while I was down, and he shot me in my hand. I put my hand- This is my first time playing paintball in years, right? And the only reason why I didn't hurt hurt him because because uh, respect to Bear, right? Yeah. Because I was think I was thinking about it, and just you should have hurt him. I should have just. Yeah. I think just yesterday I was thinking about that. I was, and you guys mm -hmm. bring it up. He's the nicest guy in the world. No, no. Honestly, honestly, if he ever, I don't remember who he is. If he ever comes around me, don't remind me who he is because I might just I might just punch him in the face. <laughs> God, That's real talk. Because I was thinking, I was thinking about that. I let that He's the nicest slide. guy in the world. He used to play but, paintball. Everybody but why he do that though? Everybody would play paintball at my paintball park, SC Village in Chino. Yeah. And Rampage came and we did a big celebrity day. Anderson Silva was there. Everybody was mm -hmm. there. Actually, R.I.P. Kobe Bryant was there too. It was oh, wow. a really fun day. But why he do that though? Because you're intimidating. No, how am I intimidating? Why did he shoot him from so close? Ah, no, 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 it's not that he shot me from so close. Andre Drummond's like eight I, feet tall. He's a basketball player. Bro, Rampage, I was already like, down. I was already out. I was already out. Uh, I, I had already got shot, and then he shot me in my face and my hand and stuff. Yeah, my hands thought like it'd this. be funny to shoot his hands because he's a tough guy. And they were no. like, I see how tough the hands are. I don't. Hey, so why didn't you hey. shoot him back? Because I know that's myself. probably what you should. I should have shot him right back in his face. But yeah, what, I you want to know? Hey, true story, and we'll move on from this true story. He comes in the door. And he locks the door. I, this is one of like three times I've ever seen him actually ready to kill someone. The, the other time was last weekend at UFC 298. Uh -oh. But he came in the door. He locks the door. He throws his gun on the floor. He goes, Bear, I love you. But I don't give, you know, and he starts cussing. He's like, who shot me? And everybody's just like speechless. And he's he's in prime time shape. There was, was a couple of people out there. And I didn't know which one shot me exactly. The room, the room was quiet and Rampage just staring at everybody. He's like, I don't care. No one's leaving until you guys tell me. Who shot me? And everybody's like ready to start pointing at Andre Drummond. I'm like, if they point at this guy, Rampage is going to run across the room and kill him. So I open up the door. I'm like, Rampage, let me walk you around the park. Everything's good. It's all good. Day's over. We said hi to Anderson. We said hi to everybody and everybody went Show home. me the picture of that guy you told. I told Andre, I said, I saved your life. You have no idea who you're uh, dealing with. Now, if I see, hey, honestly, if I see him again, I'm going to tell you right now, if I see you again, bro, I'm going to walk up to you. I, I also face. don't know what and Andre Drummond looks <laughs> you're like. You're the nicest so. guy. No, I'm right. You could Google it. Yeah, yeah you could Google it. Yeah, don't I'm do, do it. it. Don't do it. We I'm, like you happy. No, I'm going to do this shit right now. No, don't do that. We're good. Oh You're my. in a good mood today. Let's keep it no, that way. But I, no, so, I was thinking about that shit. So one thing he, I wanted, Wait, the other thing I was going to yeah. say with him, I don't know, there's Andre a Trump. funny memory I had because uh, I was, the, you were talking about Tito and the Ken Shamrock and I feel like you were there, but I don't know Where? if you were or not. Who? So my brother, my brother made friends with Rico Rodriguez. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. Uh, um, but, and then after, the, I think after the US Open in 2008, uh, he invited us up to Big Bear where Tito was training. I don't remember what fight he was training for. And we went up there for like two days and trained with Tito and Rico. And I'm not sure if you were there or not. I, pr I probably was there. Okay. Wait, wait, you don't remember what year it was? 2008. Probably April or May or something like that. 2008, 2008. I don't know if I was up there around that time. Yeah. Yeah, that was after, that was after I lost my belt. Yeah, I don't know. I was training with those guys all the yeah. time though. Yeah, one thing I want to know, did did one of you guys have more influence than the other on joining uh, the Man, this the motherfucker look like an old dirty bastard. I'm going to fuck his ass up when I see him. This motherfucker ugly as hell, man. He, he, he like, oh my He's God. He's the nicest guy. Let me I don't see. Give a, look at this motherfucker. Hey, tell me you don't like that ass uh, old dirty bastard. No, bro. He's the nicest man, guy. Man, I, I, He's I a got model. His face. I got his face now. I got his face. If He's I see this model. motherfucker. Oh, leave the guy alone, nah, if dude. I see this motherfucker, I'm going to fuck his ass. I'm just walk up to him and, and smack. I'm going to smack, I'm gonna smack him like a bitch. 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago? Yes. Well, I'm just going to bitch smack him then. Why would you do that? Because I, I thought about this shit yesterday, and it brought yeah. up, it's a, it's a, it, I thought about it he yesterday. He should just slap him so he can release it. Yeah, yeah. release it. I'll I'm let a, you slap me today. No, after no, he slapped no. him. Yeah, I'll let you slap me. Oh, yeah. he slapped like five people at the UFC 298? Why? Right, I don't know, because he's going wild. 
It's on the it's on the Jackson podcast Instagram. All right. So one thing I wanted to know is did mm. did Michael Chandler or Woodley or you who who had the most influence on on that crew all turning into MMA fighters? Um, I mean, Ty- Tyron did it first, um, but I think it was just we all just wanted to. You was know, he I really managing you guys? Uh, I think he managed Michael for a while, not not myself. So I did my first three fights. Uh, so actually, I promoted the first card that me and Tyron debuted on, and then the set. My second fight was I promoted. I couldn't find anyone back then. Two thousand eight was different, right? And so it was like I was zero and zero in an Olympian, and the guy who was kind of like managing me was calling everyone, and no one wanted to fight me, mm. right? Because I'm zero and zero, and I'm an Olympian. They just don't want to fight me. So I'm like, okay, let's put our own card. And so we had to pay my opponent like way more money than he probably deserved to fight me, because Wait, no one you wanted. Paid to. someone to fight you? Well, we're, we. Right, we put on the whole fight card, so we paid everybody. Oh, got it. Right, but to to get the guy to fight me, we had to pay him a little more because they knew they were probably gonna get beat up. Yeah, yeah it's not. Hey, listen, I'm a wrestler, That's crazy, and it's not it's not fun <laughs> fighting wrestlers. I'm gonna have to keep it 100. Yeah, I don't I don't like to fight wrestlers that just wrestle. I yeah. fucking hate fighting y'all. That's you like, you probably don't remember this, but I met you in 2008 at 2007 at the ESPYS, and uh, you were gonna fight Dan Harrison, and you were complaining about how you didn't want to fight a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, yeah, I fucking hate that. I'm a wrestler, and I hate fighting wrestlers. Yeah. Y'all motherfuckers just be laying on motherfuckers, nut hugging and humping and shit like that. Man, take a chance, fight. Uh, it's an MMA fight. Well, yeah, you hold them down and then you keep punching them until the ref says stop. That's that's not exciting. That's within the rule set. It's it's in the rule set. Yes. I give you that, but it's yeah. not exciting. You got to beat a motherfucker up, make them make a regret even getting in the motherfucking cage with you. Well, I don't know. I might so I might disagree with you, but. <laughs> Uh, I don't think there's any anything more demoralizing than someone holding you down and punching you in the face, and you can't do a damn thing about it. That's pretty awful, that's the right? Because way. that's like that's like death by a thousand cuts. Versus like, say if you were to get knocked down on your feet, you probably don't feel it, and then you wake up and you're like, "What happened?" But what about if you take somebody down and you just pummel the shit out of them? You beat the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, that's and, what. Yeah, elbow. Not that's not just like that's not just hold them. That's when they move. Hug yeah, them. no, I, I agree. You gotta try to finish him. Yeah, yeah, that's, I agree. That's the Habib. A lot of people look at Habib and they're like, "All right, cool. This guy's gonna just kind of." But he had quite a bit of finishes. He's gonna control. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that's yeah. his style. He's gonna sit there. He's gonna control you, and there's not a damn thing you could do about yeah. it. How, you, how you think you would have done against him so dominant? Habib, his wrestling. You and Habib. I mean, that would have been fun to do. But I don't. I always feel like since I lost two fights at the end of my career, I feel like I can't talk about him because he had no losses. But yeah, I mean, that's with someone I would have loved to fight in. Uh, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I understand I'm what you're correct. saying, but you yeah. you, you yeah. would you would say your wrestling's better than his. If we wrestled in a wrestling match, I, yeah, I'd pick myself. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so how old are you now? You say you six years younger than me. I'm 39. God damn, you still young, man. Yeah, are you really 45? I'm really 45. Okay. Well, you think I'm? I'm you must have started fighting really young though, because I remember yeah. you fighting like. Not, 20, he doesn't believe you. I want to say 2003 or two or something. I started. I started fighting. Uh, I had my first amateur fight when I was like 21, 22. Okay, when was your first? When were you fighting in Pride? Uh, I did. I did King in the Cage. I did a bunch of fights in Cage. So I was in. I probably started Pride when I was 23. Dang, that is that's crazy, yo. Yeah. Wow. In terms of wrestling, the wrestling style that Habib has, mm-hmm. that's actually a great point. If you guys were to wrestle, what do you think it would have taken for you to kind of control him and beat him on on the mats? Yeah, I mean, so you know what's really interesting about uh, Habib is that yeah, I I think Daniel taught him, but the wrist control stuff that's a folk style wrestling thing. Um, you know, how you grab the wrist and keep them down with that. So in freestyle wrestling, which is what they do in Russia, pretty much every non-American country is that you just have to turn them over, right? You don't actually have to hold them down. They're not trying to escape. And so it's a lot different. And so like you see someone like uh, a Yoel Romero, who is a world-class wrestler, but he can't keep anyone down, right? He'll take them down and they'll get up like 20 seconds later, you know? Um, versus American wrestling, you, you take them down and you keep them on the ground. And that's kind of where it really is a huge Got advantage. It. But Khabib was able to take people down and then keep them down and continue to beat them up. I I, I got an idea. You know, yeah. I, I like to have these ideas. <laughs> you know, Khabib, Khabib promised his mom that he would never fight again. Yeah. But wrestling ain't a fight. How about we make a super fight? Let's do it. But Jackson him? sponsored? Yeah. You want Jackson to sponsor a Habib? Freestyle wrestling, wrestling, match? Yeah, yeah, freestyle yeah. wrestling match? A freestyle wrestling match. A, super, a super, super wrestling match. A super match. Yeah, freestyle, freestyle, folk style, whatever whatever style of wrestling he wants. But with, with pinning? Sure. Like you could pin him? Yeah. I heard, right. a, I heard, is there, is it true that uh, John Danaher called you and said that pinning someone in a wrestling match is stupid and he'll no, never uh, allow you to do that? Is that true? Well, I told you, I said uh, in 2020, when the world shut down, yeah, 
I was working full wrestling and they want to do something with, cause they have the full grappling and they have the full wrestling. And they were like, okay, what can we do? Cause nothing's happening where we can kind of combine these worlds. And so I talked, uh, I talked to Gordon Ryan and we, we talked about doing, um, a catch wrestling, right? Cause catch wrestling, the original is submit them or pin them, mm -hmm. right? There's no guard play. You're not, you can't be on your back. Um, and so I, you know, I talked to Gordon Ryan and I said, well, you bring a team of jujitsu guys and I'll bring a team of wrestlers. Because the thing that Damn. when you do wrestlers in, gra in, in grappling is, as good as the wrestler may be, they can't finish the they can't finish. So a good a, as great of a wrestler can be, they're not going to submit Gordon Ryan ever, really? never. Ne no, it's not going to. Okay, is a wrestler ever going to submit Ty Rutulo? No, it's not. It's not going to happen, right? Yeah. But so we need a way to finish the fight also, and that can be a pin. And obviously, an MMA fight, if I can hold you on your back, I can elbow you or punch you until the fight's over. So my idea was catch wrestling. You bring jujitsu guys, I bring wrestlers, and we do catch wrestling, submission, or pin. He actually thought he Gordon Ryan liked the idea. And then Dan Hurd on the phone, and he's like, That's dumb. I don't want to do it. I'm like, oh shit. It's not dumb. I think it's a good idea because I thought what he's it'd be fun. true. How how are you ever gonna submit Ty Rotolo on the ground? It's just Show not gonna someone. happen. Who's Ty Rotolo? The Rotolo brothers, you know him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty Rotolo, he's insane. They're I just know him about Rotolo brothers. Yeah, they're both they're both champions and they're both insane. So I mean good. the reverse darts that they run on everybody, yeah. they they do that with their eyes closed and they're they're doing it against world class athletes and they're doing it with ease. So yeah. but you you think you can pin them, but you don't think you can submit them. Well that's uh I mean, no, I don't think I can submit those high level guys, but that's where it's like But you but, can pin them. And if they, yeah, so I could put them on their back, but if they can't play guard, then that takes a lot of their weapons away also, mm. right? Because if that's where, if, if I were to do a grappling match against a grappler, they're probably just going to pull guard right away, right? They're probably just going to lay right on their back. And to my point is like, well, in an MMA fight, no one wants to lay on their back because if you lay on your back, you're probably going to get punched. I mean, yeah, there's no one who wins fights from their back anymore. They're like, it maybe it happened like 20 years ago, but it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. So you retire as an undefeated champ of Bellator mm -hmm. and won, and then you're in retirement, and then UFC calls you. And I know there's a lot of there was a little bit of drama with you and Dana, yeah. but can you kind of like for the for the fans that don't know the whole story or the whole landscape of this situation? Yeah, like, won Bellator, win belts, then all of a sudden you go to UFC and you get traded for Mighty Mouse. Like it's the craziest story yeah. in the UFC. Well, so um, so I had three fights. So I fought the two first pro ones. Uh, I promoted the card. The third fight, I literally fought for $400. Uh, I literally just said, I, I had a buddy that was promoting fights. I said, listen, I don't need any money. Just give me a fight. I need to get a few more fights. Because back then, um, in that era, no one was signing anyone that was zero and zero. Where like Bellator does that these days. You know, if they're a good athlete in a different, like a jiu-jitsu or boxing or whatever, they'll sign them. Yeah. Um, so I said, I just need some fights and then I'll get signed. So I, I fought someone who was 14 and six for my third fight. I submitted them easy. And then Bellator called. Uh, that was like, I think they were on their second season. I mean, it was like right in the beginning. It was Bjorn Rebney? Bjorn, yes. And he says, uh, you know, hey, well, you get $100,000 for three fights. And I thought, well, shit, I just got four hundred for that one. So 100000 that sounds awesome. <laughs> Let's do it, you know? Uh, so then I signed with them. You got to stay close. Oh, sorry. I signed with them. Uh, so I probably 2010, I think I fought, uh, and I thought the tournament was awesome. I got to fight three times in three months. So like, uh, March, April, May or something like that. And then I fought for the title in October. And so I was seven and oh, and I was the Bellator champ kind of like right away. It's like their version of a Grand Prix, right? They did the yeah. three fights back to back. Cause you did it three fights in the same night, right? No, we did two. We did two. We did two. Yeah. And they did mm -hmm. it every month, right? Yeah. You did once a month. So they, yeah. they did a 12 week season. There was like four or five weight classes. And so you had to fight like. You know, three yeah. times in that twelve weeks, but yeah. but it wasn't same night. Not same night. It wasn't no. two fights in one night at, at all. No, no, no. So it was like one fight per month. So okay, okay, yeah. you know, like this weight class is this day. So it's the week one, week five, and week nine or whatever. Mm -hmm. The next one's week two, six, yeah. and ten, something yeah. like that. For some reason, I thought when you got traded uh, for Mighty Mouse that you came from one FC. Well, I did. Okay, so in 2013, I finished my Bellator contract. I was 12 and 0. I'd been the champ for three years, um, and I thought I was going to the UFC. I pretty much just told Bellator like I'm not coming back. Like, release me. Um, and so I finally got released. And then I went to UFC headquarters. And they didn't offer me a contract. They and, said you was boring, didn't they? Uh, he, you know, he yeah, never he, gave me a real reason. Dana White put out a tweet, though, calling that you was, Well, fighter. he called me that. And so the, that was in 2012. That's hold on. I, <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Man. In 2012, <laughs> Dana said you can't drug test everyone. So I never took steroids, PDs. So I was in favor of people being tested because I didn't think it was 
it was not fair that they were cheating. I, I wasn't cheating, you know? Yeah. So I actually wanted people to be tested. So he said, it's impossible. And I said, well, you're a liar. Uh, USADA would do it, or USADA could do it, right? Because they do it for all the Olympic sports in America. And that was when that prompted that series of tweets from him where yeah. he said, uh, yeah, a bunch of mean, bunch of mean oh, things yeah. about me. Yeah, Dana is the king of mean tweets. Yes. But mean did you tweets. guys already have a rocky relationship going No, into there was tweet, nothing. Tweet war? Nothing. No. That was so, it. And then after that, he didn't offer you a deal? Well, so in 2013, I finished. I was like ranked six or seven in the world. Um, I finished my contract. I said, Bellator, I'm not coming back. Um, I'm going to move on. I figured I'd be going to the UFC. Um, and yeah, I went there. I had no offer. And so I hit up one championship and uh, they offered me a deal. And so I went to one championship and then I spent four years there. I was the champ. My what second fight, I was the champ, and I retired in 2017. So, yeah, by the time um, I got uh, the trade, I had been retired for a while. So I retired in November of 2017, and then in, I think it was like September or October of 2018, uh, Chatri called me up, who's the CEO of one, yeah. and he said, hey, well, what if we traded you? I said, um, yeah, cool. Like, yeah, if you want to. Um, because my caveat with coming back was I want to be able to fight people who are ranked higher than me. You know, I've been to this point where I haven't lost and I fought guys who are ranked like 12 in the world, 14 in the world, but I never fought anyone that was like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And that was kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and so I said, yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to it. So I was, I, that's what I was saying to you, uh, is Demetrius had to hate the UFC because at that point I was retired. You know, it's not like one championship was trying to deal me. Like I was done. You know, I was like, and that time, that timeline that you were done, did USC at all ever reach out to no. you? Besides, no, really? Never. Well, I was, I had one fight left in my contract, with one championship. Yeah. And it was, you know, um, probably that watching the concussion movie, like I, I commented about. And then the other thing, I read a lot of uh, biographies of athletes growing up and all athletes fight too long and they spend too much money. Right. <laughs> That's so true. So, so many of them end up broke. And so I said, I don't want to, I don't want to fight too long and I can't spend all my money. So when I retired, I had not spent all my money and I was, you know, I was still like 33 or 34. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. I wanted to eventually, you know, I wanted to retire at about 35. I had a whole lot of other stuff I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, but I, I loved it. I loved it so much. I love fighting. And then yeah. I saw like BJ Penn and a lot of other fighters retired and they come back. I was like, mm. nah, that's what I don't want to do. Mm. I don't want to miss it and come back. So you, yeah. don't, you don't miss it? Uh, well, I told him we were, we were talking earlier and I said, I miss the fight part of it. Like it, that feeling when you're walking out to the cage, like there's not much like that. You know, mm, you get yeah. to go battle another person in a cage. It's so much fun. But I also realize I'm not actually willing to do the work necessary to perform at a high level. <laughs> so that's kind of the thing for me is like, I, I know I'm not going to do it and I know it's time to move on. Yeah. 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 I, I miss, I'm, I haven't fought in four years. I haven't, I haven't officially retired. Like uh, the UFC. Oh, you never actually officially retired? No, never. They, when I, my last fight in the UFC with uh, Glover Texiaga. Yeah. Uh, UFC painted a picture that I was retiring because hmm. I was leaving them because they took my Reebok deal. And I okay. went to, and I went to Bellator and I had been fighting in Bellator for years and a lot of fans didn't even know. It's like Bellator, they they was very they was terrible at promoting. They really were, right? Yeah, they didn't promote very yeah. well. That was the Coker thing. Is like somehow. Bellator just fell off and it was like hard to even pay attention to like when they're having a fight card or where do I watch it or anything yeah, like that. That's before. Uh, I think Coker inherited a, a big problem. Yeah. Because uh, Bjorn Rebney, um, um, in and, and, and my opinion, he, he didn't care about the fighters. In my, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. he, he didn't want to sign me. And so in my, my own Wait, person. Wait, so you fought under Bjorn? Yeah. I, I don't the, remember that. I was, the first, I was the first fighter from the UFC to come over there. To really? come from the UFC. Yeah, I was the first one. Okay, and I, and I went. I signed with uh, I Beyond Re Revenue signed me, but I, I signed a deal with Paramount Pictures. Okay, and so I signed a deal, a whole deal with Paramount. And um, bro, it was the worst contract ever. I don't read contracts, and my manager read. <laughs> my manager did it. I, I like it was a good deal. It was it was a shady contract. Bro. Really, it was a shady contract. Oh, they 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 promised me the world and and didn't deliver on anything. Damn. So I was yeah, like, well, I mean yep. it's important to have a good team around you when you get deals done. Yeah. I never had an issue with Bjorn. Um, but he would try to pull some stuff over. Like I remember uh, my contract was, it was six fights. If I won the tournament, I won a belt and any of these other things, I'd get three more fights added on, right? So had nine fights. And I remember I had one fight left and I was he was talking to me. He's like, uh, I said, yeah, well, Bjorn, I only have one fight left. Like it's going to be this guy. Or, yeah, I don't remember what it was. We were arguing about something. I said, I only have one fight left. He goes, no, you have four fights left. And I'm like, Bjorn, I can read the contract. <laughs> 
It says, if I do any of these things, I get three fights added. He's like, well, no, it's this and this. I'm like, no, dude, you're an idiot. I have it right here. Like it says this. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. So like he was just trying to yeah. get one over yeah, on me. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know he's an attorney, right? Is he? You didn't know that? No. Yeah, he's he's an attorney. Really? Yeah. And so, yeah. Is that, he, that's who you dealt with when you got your parents' yeah, was deal? He was, yeah, that's who I did. That's who I did my deal with. He was the, uh, you know, the president of, uh, and the owner, you know what I'm saying, of, of uh, Bellator. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting landscape right now with the PFL and Bellator. We just saw Jackson win the belt again, yep. and they did this, like, merger of the best PFL guys versus the best Bellator guys. Yeah. And Ganyu, John Jones, Mike Tyson are all sitting there. You saw that post? Yeah, I saw it. And I, saw, I saw, um, what was the champion name from Bellator? Uh, Ryan Bader? Who Ryan yeah. Bader? I saw him out. get bitched. Hey, that guy's kind of gigantic. Yeah, that guy is gigantic, but come on, man. You don't fight a big guy like that. Yeah. That's a guy. He's a wrestler. Why he didn't set up and try to go in for you the- You said you hate takedowns. No, no. I, I, did, I said I hate- No, no, no. See, that's why- <laughs> See, see got he, you. No, 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 no. He got he you. Didn't get me. He, got he you. didn't get me. He got you. He didn't get me. I'm a wrestler. I hate when people hug you on yeah. the fucking ground. And that's like- uh, It's different. You probably hate it. What was the one- uh, He's a Brazilian guy. He's a heavyweight. He was doing so much hugging. Oh, what's his name? He just fought like uh, Gilton Almeida. Did you watch that fight no, with Derek Lewis? No, I don't watch oh, that you shit. need to go he watch that. I don't watch that shit. Now, yeah. see, look, see, the, people always get me wrong. How can people always take my words wrong? I said I don't. I'm a wrestler. I don't mind people wrestling and using wrestling. Remember, mm -hmm. I say take them down and, and punish them. Yeah, don't take them down. Just hug them like yeah. Chael Shannon did me. Like 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 Rashad Evans. You know, like Chael like, hugged you. Hell yeah. Maybe he just liked you. Man, fuck Chael. Oh. He fucking humped my motherfucking legs and shit. Fuck Chael Shannon. Fuck Rashad Evans. You love Fuck Chael Sutton, don't lie. Hell no. Fuck all you wrestling, hum leg humping motherfuckers. Call all y'all. He calls him Uncle Chael. But look, but look. Why you call him Uncle Chael then? Because he's funny. <laughs> he is funny. But but I wish I wish um, you know honestly I'm American so I was going for um, you know said for Bader plus mm -hmm. yeah. he, he beat me before so I'm always going to go for. You lost Ryan Bader. I don't remember that. Yeah, I fought, I fought him in Japan. I was injured. I, I try. I slammed him on. His, oh, I, I, I slammed. Right. I, he the only person I ever slammed on their fucking neck because I was trying to get the fight over with. I always protect people when I slam them. But to bullshit. Be, no, for real. You're when, so full of shit. When have you ever seen me slam somebody on their fucking neck? That uh, the the Arona? Brazilian guy who Arona? retired. Arona. Yeah, but he slammed. I slammed him on his back. Arona? You tried killing him. Yeah, he pissed me off though. But I slammed him on his back. No, though. you did. Arona you slammed on his head. No, that's why. He, Arona. That's why he got Arona. knocked out. Right, but but, Arona, you know, yeah. but listen, but he didn't get slammed on his neck though. Like, I'm gonna keep saying it till you till you come to the conclusion of you slammed this dude on his neck, on his head. head. I slammed head. on his back. Let head. me finish my thought. Head. Let me finish my thought. Crap. Brian Bader, I was injured for that fight. I got okay. injured training wrestling uh, for him, and I tore my meniscus. Okay, and so I was like, man, I need to get this fight over with. So I picked him up and I tried to slam him. I did. I, I was wrong <laughs> for that, but I tried to slam him on his neck to get the fight over. Oh, with. you're saying you tried to spiking him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I just wanted. I, I knew I was. You know, I knew I was. Well, it is. I mean, the point of a fight is to hurt them so they can't compete anymore. But I was just trying to get the fight over with. So I apologize. But he came back and beat me by decision. Hey, you know it's real. It's actually very interesting. This morning when we were eating breakfast, I was looking at highlights on YouTube and you know, it has like a suggestion, like the algorithm just keeps sending you videos. There's a highlight video. I've never seen it. It's your Sakuraba fight, your first fight. And you, you slam this dude like five times on his head. Yeah. I, and I yeah. had never seen these clips. Yeah. yeah I hadn't yeah. watched a full fight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Sakuraba, I was actually, that was a short notice fight for me in the first yeah. round of 10 minutes. So I was going to throw him out the ring. But um, I think Pride overheard me telling my people they they they. they, they was it looks sniping. like you're about to throw them through the ropes. Yeah, yeah. I was going to throw them over the ring, but they oh told me God. they told me if I threw them out the ring, they was never going to bring me back. So I was like, <laughs> so I scared him. I just threw him on the ropes. Yeah, and, I, I was and, watching. And I go wet because he's always told me about this, and I had never watched a full fight, and it's like a different angle now, and you can totally see you doing it. And I was like, all right, oh so this guy's yeah, practicing I was going to throw, I was going to throw my ring. But what, what I was what yeah. I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. Don't act like you, you're so nice to these people in the ring, bro. We can all watch your highlights. You throw people yeah. on their neck and their head. You don't protect anybody. Yeah, no. Only, only person I have a spike was Ryan Bader. And I, I, don't, I, don't dislike, I don't dislike Ryan Bader, but yeah. I kind of wanted him to win, but I didn't want to see him bitch out against a real big dude like that. He, yeah. he, he, he bitched out. What do you mean by bitch? Didn't he get knocked out? I didn't watch the fight, but. He turned his back to him. And, you know what I'm okay. saying? Like, so he didn't get knocked out. Can we get him on the pod? Yeah, get his ass on the pod. Ask him why he bitch out against the big dude. Like he could have, he could have pulled him in his guard, and so he got dropped. Yeah. Right, he, he's okay. fighting him wrong. He's yeah. fighting a big guy wrong. The guy was giant. 
He fighting the he big guy. He's like six seven or something. Yeah, he fought he fought yeah. the big guy wrong. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Like, the Bellas are killed PFL. They won like five five of the fights. Yeah, yeah only yeah. one. I think only one PFL guy. That one. That was the one. Yeah, that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, in talks of GSP, there was a lot of rumor that you were supposed to fight GSP. Did that ever come really close to getting no, done? No, because I never got in the UFC. Well, not at the right time. By the yeah. time I came in, he was retired. Did they ever offer you a deal like no. to do that? Nothing. Nothing. So it was all rumor. Yeah, I mean, 2013, I, like I said, I went to the UFC headquarters yeah. and I left and there was no offer. Wow. How do you rate his wrestling? Because he, he improved a lot. Uh, you know, He was just really, really good at setting up takedowns and strikes, you know, which is a good MMA skill. Uh, as far as like just like pure wrestling, I I don't think maybe he was a great pure wrestler, but he was like the best take, takedowns and strikes. I think he can beat you in wrestling now. Stop. Yeah, because he's been set wrestling. it up. You can set up all want, these matches. All right. Yeah, you I want to say that. George St. Pierre could beat Ben Affleck. Yeah, you're wrestling. crazy. Yeah. You're wrestling. Come yeah. on, bro. The guy's you know one of the mo- why? Because he's been training with those. Um, he's been training jiu jitsu. No, but he's been training, training wrestling with a gion. But he's been training wrestling in uh, with the with the Canadian team. They suck. <laughs> They're terrible. Bro, America just wrestled the Pan Ams. America just wrestled the Pan Ams last weekend in a free America in freestyle wrestling. America did not lose one match, and they finished all of the matches by tech fall or pin. It's against the Canadians? Well, it's, it's the Pan Am, so every country from uh-huh. North or South But America. how did the Canadians do? They came in second. Awful. Uh-huh. They uh, came in running up. They came in second place. I don't, I don't know what place, but it wasn't good. So you're basically you're saying USA is on fire right now. Uh, um, well, yeah, we, America's good, but everyone else in the Pan Am region sucks. Oh, well, come on. Okay, so it was a padded Cuba tournament. used to be really, really good, uh, and they're not good anymore. So America's, we the best at wrestling right now. In this area. So well, we uh, yeah, like, well, Russia and Iran are really good, uh, but that would be a world. So in the Pan Ams, no one else is any good. Can anybody right now in the world beat Gable season? Well, um, you know what I don't like is he didn't show up for Worlds last year. Why not? Uh, no one really knows for sure. I guess people are guessing that it was a WWE thing. Mm. But so he actually decided to wrestle. He wrestled at the US Open and the, and the trials. Uh, he was the American representative, right? So every year you got to wrestle tournament to pick who's the guy. He's the guy. And then I think like six weeks before Worlds, he said, oh, I'm not going anymore. So he didn't go to the Worlds. Yeah. Mm. So we had someone else go. Uh, and the other, the other person whom he had beat took third. Oh, got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there's, we got to yeah, ask yeah. him that. Well, is, he, is he like really like the best heavyweight uh, wrestler in the, in America? Yeah. In the world? Uh, well, he won 2020 only won, but he hasn't went back to the world since. So in 2022 or 2023, he hasn't went. There's this one really good guy from Iran that everyone wants to see him wrestle. Uh, and that would be, you guys could put that on your card also. Yeah. That'd be his, name <laughs> Zare, his name is Zare. He's matchmaking. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, let's, yeah, let's think but, about this. Let's think about this. He can yeah. help us get the best wrestlers that have like the super matches. I mean, I think Gable Stevenson, even if he were to come back and do Worlds or qualify for the Olympics, is probably the greatest heavyweight in the world. Um, st- yeah, I mean, listen, that, th- here's the thing about wrestling. Ch- this is a Chael take. I know you love Chael. <laughs> Chael says, with fighting, it's weird because you may not know who the best in the world is because there's multiple promo- promotions, and you got to get people matched up, right? It takes a while to get to the top. In wrestling, every single year, there is a World Championships. And if you don't go to the world championships, you don't say you're the best in the world, right? If you say you're best in the world, you got to show up and you got to win. Mm. And that's it. Like, that makes sense. Though. There is no argument. Preach. Yeah, that there's no sense. argument. Ben, so, so listen, let's hear, like let's hear me out. Hear me out. If Khabib don't don't want to wrestle him in a super super match, we get we we draw him out with him versus GSP. I'm good with that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then it, we got Gable versus Zare. That's probably the match. Yeah, that, I would really that like to guy see is that one. Really good. Match. But can we get he's Gable though? Because he's he's, he's on a contract with WWE. Gable was just here. He was with. But I'm saying, but to do this right. We just won't tell. We won't tell the WWE. But how are we going to make our money back? <laughs> we, so we won't tell them. We'll just do the match and we'll stream it on your channel or something. We'll live stream it. We'll live stream it. Yeah, Rampage TV. Right. So in terms of Uncle Chael, since we're on that topic, there's a video where he's talking about how there should be a documentary and that wrestling has no clue what they're doing because, you know, Uncle Chael goes yeah, wild on his does, videos with you on one side of the mat, DC on the other side mm-hmm. of the mat. You guys are yelling at each other. You guys have kids tournaments. Yeah. You guys have mm-hmm. your own league. Like, can you break this down and explain to us what Uncle Chael's talking about? Yeah. Uh, so we started a league of the best clubs in America. Uh, and it started during Corona because there was no tournaments. And okay. so a bunch of us were talking and thinking about how do we make matches for our kids because no one's putting on tournaments. And then we all got, uh, we were all kind of on the same page about certain things we like and don't like. So the next year, eight of us, eight of the best clubs, we started a league called the PNL. Um, we had tournaments. And then the next year we added, we went to 18 teams. And now next year we're going to go to 30 teams. 
Um, so Daniel's team's in there. David Taylor has a team. David called Taylor's M2. team in there too. Mm. Yeah. So uh, a bunch of really, really good. How's clubs. DC's wrestling team? Uh, they're really good. I think they just took third at state in California. Wow. Yeah. So is DC just coaching like a high school team and then he made that his club team? So he has a high school team. I think he's done. I think he's going to be done with the high school. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, but then he also has his wrestling. I think it's DC Wrestling Academy. Mm. Yeah. So DC has a wrestling academy. You have a wrestling academy. Yes. How's Uncle Chill involved in this situation? Uh, to my knowledge, he's not. This is news <laughs> to me. Um, I think, you know, I think he supports a lot of the local wrestling programs in Oregon. Okay. Uh, I believe we're adding a team or two from Oregon next year. So okay. that's probably how. Yeah, so there's a... I think yeah. Chael's just a, a huge supporter of... He loves wrestling. He does. Yeah, so I'm on FR Flow Wrestling Radio Live, and um, he comes on, like, semi-regularly. And he just taught... He just loves... He wrestling. loves wrestling, just talks about it, and yes, he does shit on the promotion of wrestling, though. Yeah, that's cool. So, but he doesn't have a team in your league. He does not. But I do know he coaches a team. I just, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to figure out where that team is at because it's kind of hard to follow where all these wrestling teams are at with all these famous coaches. Yeah. So do uh, you and DC ever yell at each other? Um, Because you guys didn't really fight in the parking lot, did you? What? Like there was like an argument. Yeah, yeah. We heard, a, we heard a rumor. Yeah. I, I didn't know he was going to bring it up. We heard a rumor that you and DC fought in the parking lot over the are wrestling and you kicked his ass. Or you I, like well, yelled I, at him. If we did fight, I would kick his ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But you can uh, out wrestle DC. You can out wrestle DC. I'll take him down, no problem. And you can hold him down. Yeah, he's big. Tell him I'll take Daniel down and I'll hold him down. Wow, we can no, put that uh, on a yeah, fight yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we just. Heard I that don't think we've ever had a fight about anything. You guys were just yelling at each other then in the parking lot, basically. No, about someone, no, we someone made this up. Something. No, it was no, something no. technical that you, your team won. Because didn't your team just win the last event? Uh, yeah, the last but, three uh, Me and Daniel were not yelling at each other. What, but you call him Daniel like it's so official. Do you say DC or Daniel? Because Uncle Chael Daniel. calls him D. So Daniel. What? He does? Yeah, he just calls him he D. He does not call him Chael D. and D show. Yeah, you got to watch his YouTube. See? DC show? Chael and D. Just Chael and D. No DC. What? Right? I, that's my, that's, yeah, that's yeah. news to, that's news that's to me. That's news to me yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. It, um, show. But we kind of heard that, that, that Bear likes D, so he probably made that up. I... Wait, what? I like DC. He's an amazing and phenomenal UFC fighter. One of the best ever. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think me and Daniel have ever fought. <laughs> Daniel did yell. He yells at some referees. See, you know, see, Daniel. always a kernel of truth. One, here. See, one of the. I never yelled at Daniel. He never yelled at me. You know, I, 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 I'm going to tell a funny story. Is it I'm the like, same guy? Daniel? Yes. Okay. Just His name's sure. Daniel Cormier. We, I call him Daniel. All right. All right just uh, sure. So one of the, so we made up, like I said, there's a whole bunch of things we don't like. So one of the things we want the best referees, right? So we made up these rules where. You can't you can't abuse the referees. So if you get too crazy, you, the league finds you, right? <laughs> so Daniel got fined like five hundred bucks. Wow! In uh, in Phoenix, I think that was two years ago. What's he doing to get fined? I I you know what I wasn't there at the mat, but he got very hostile over something the referee. No, did. yeah. So yeah. DC's threatening the refs. I don't think he threatened him, but he was not happy with the call. Is he is he a nice guy? Damn, he has great. He's you don't know Daniel? I know him, but I don't know him like that. Really? I yeah. figured. Uh, no, no, no. I, you know why? Because uh, we have, we, uh, before I even really met him, I saw he said something about me on the internet because of- um, What'd he say? He, he's good friends with Queen Mo. You Mo. stop. Yeah. And Queen Mo hated no. him like a- Yeah. Qu okay. King Mo. Oh, my bad. King Mo. I love King Mo also. All right. You guys should really get along. Well, he don't like me. He can't you stand my You seem like guts. a great guy. He seems I, like a great he guy. Can't stand my, he can't stand my guts. Really? Why? He said it all started from when the first time he met me, I was talking to two white people and I didn't acknowledge him at King of the Cage. Did that she, happen? Probably. Maybe he doesn't like you because you call him Queen Mo and not King now I now I call Mo, him Queen Mo. Mo is awesome. Yeah. You, you now I call him on. Queen. Now I call him Queen Mo. Look at you, you need to have you need to DC have and Uncle um, Chill. Good guy, bad guy. It's a new ESPN show. All the people uh, that Rampage doesn't like, you yeah. should bring on the show and make them make up. Why do you think show. you're here? <laughs> you don't like me? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'll wrestle you. <laughs> I'm a defensive wrestler. I'd be surprised you take I me down. Yeah. Oh, let's go. We got right. mass back there. Oh no, my! I haven't wrestled in a long time. Don't, he don't probably, do it. Don't yeah, do he it. probably. You're right. on. You're yeah, on such a high Tito, 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 Tito took me down not too long ago. Say, so Tito's probably, not very high level wrestler. I mean, you're comparing yeah, Tito but, to this guy. Tito's amazing. But this is what I'm saying. I said Tito took me down. He does his Tito took me down like like what last year at at the UFL, and I wasn't ready for it. I have drinking, but I'm a defense. Bro, they're drunk in a ring. They're both out of shape. and like they're wrestling. Tell wrestlers, we'll wrestle anywhere. Tell them, yeah, we'll wrestle anywhere. We'll wrestle anywhere. You know, you saw Chael pin Tito in that wrestling match. You guys saw that? No, I didn't see that one. It was when they were in college. They wrestled in 
college. Oh, yeah, I did see yes, that. Yes, they did. Wait, can you pull that up? I Chael, did see that. Chael Sonnen and a Tito Ortiz wrestling? Oh, yeah, they wrestled wow. in college. I, Chael, I believe Chael headlocked it, maybe, or something. I, I did see that. Well, yeah. the other night when we got home from UFC 298, Luke Rockhold was in here with Nikki Rod, and everybody was, like, sparking off on each other, and then Nikki started just pinning everybody, submitting everybody in wrestling, and then Luke was like, I'm going to the bars. So yeah, and Bear, Bear was asking all the guys Wait. to start in jiu-jitsu. He was asking everybody, let's start North-South. Let's start North South. And I was like, bro. I'm- uh, wait, so Nicky Rod took, not, not jujitsu, <laughs> but he took Luke Rockhold down in wrestling? No, Luke Rockhold and Nicky Rod train a lot together when yeah. they're in town. And they and they have really good matches and they they okay. have good sparring sessions. But but Luke's a lot bigger, right? But Luke no, will spar no, anybody. No, 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 no. they're the Nicky same Rod's height. that big? He no, Nicky Rod's Oh, Nicky Rod. I'm Nicky thinking Rod. of someone else. J-Rod, J-Rod, his little brother? No, I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of Nicky Ryan actually. Oh, that's Gordon Ryan's little Gordon brother. Gordon Ryan's little brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's smaller, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never seen him before. Is he? No, Nicky Rod and, and and Luke have amazing training sessions. Craig Jones yeah, was in here. Nicky Rod's actually a wrestler originally. Uh, he started like only like three four years ago, and his first match ever was against Luke, like overseas. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like a, a, a some event called um, what was that event called overseas that Luke and Nicky Rod were in? Oh, like Polaris or something. Polaris. There you go. Oh, did did, did Luke beat him? Mm mm. Luke lost by like decision or something because no one they were just running around. You know what's crazy? Uh, since I've been hanging out with Luke and stuff, his his fights have been coming up on my my uh, TikTok oh, feed. Oh man, I've been watching and some of his Luke fights. Was, he's a he's a great he's a great fighter. One yeah. of the best. I mean, his question mark kick is probably one of the best kicks the UFC's ever seen. His kicking style, but he was an all around something that Luke doesn't yeah. get enough credit for. His jujitsu is insane. His wrestling is pretty solid. Striking was insane. Everything yeah. was solid. So. In um, terms no, of you pro- and Daniel get along really well. He's he's a he's just like a super nice. Awesome I would yeah, I met him. I met him. I met him backstage once a time. We shook hands, but before that, I didn't think he liked me because I heard he said something about me. What did he say? I can't remember. This is years ago because him and him and Queen King, King Mo is really good friends. You see, right? they, you see how he keeps these things. King Mo, he's years. great. You need to bring King Mo on the show and make I, them make up. I bet you King Mo won't come on the show. Well, he, I bet he, he would. He can't stand me. Still? Yeah. You just Why? See, I don't you remember. Did you guys fought? Yeah, you guys. Yeah, we fought twice. Twice. We fought twice. I didn't even want to fight him the second time. I beat him the first time. I didn't want to fight him the second time. Like, why I got to fight him again? A leg humper. That's why y'all close friends. Oh, my God. Do you guys, uh, do you guys train together? Uh, I mean, I haven't talked to Mo in years, but, um, oh. you know, we're all kind of the same nice circuit. Guy. They, nice guy. They're the same type of fighters. But King, but you know what, King, he's game though. He's he was a good, he was a good fight. He was yeah. a good, he was a good adversary. You know, yeah. I wish I wish yeah, it, I, Daniel beat Mo to make the world team two thousand seven and the Olympic team two thousand eight. How they the same weight class? They were both two eleven. So the weight classes in wrestling are too far apart. It was one eighty five and two eleven, and Mo tried making uh, one eighty five, and he like. Oh, we like, oh, this is Chael. Yeah, and, we're going uh, to put this one, on. Which one? Tito? Chael Sonnen and Tito Ortiz. Tito's in the blue. He's Kelsey Bakersfield and Chael's from uh, green and yellow from Oregon. They don't even look like they was the same weight class. Oh, Tito is trying to do this little ankle lock over here, huh? Ankle lock him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There goes the I think they were like 190 maybe, 177, something Uncle like Chael that. Uncle eating the carrots with oh, the Oh, oh headlock. Oh, that's a little. Oh, that's a uh, pin. Uh, that was uh, a nice pin, Uncle Chael. Yeah, he's been now. Call it ref. ref wow, I don't at, know why the ref won't call this. Look at Tito really trying to work his side over here, huh? Not giving Tito's up. Tito's not strong enough to re-roll him. I would have re-rolled him right there. I was a king of From re-rolling. the inside? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. a king of that. Uh, that's hilarious, right? Watching those guys in college. Wow. Was Uncle Chael nasty in college? Uh, I mean, honestly, that's too far past. He's, he's older than me. I don't remember that. Like, I wasn't watching college wrestling yet. Yeah. That's I didn't even know that video existed. You also can't couldn't really watch college wrestling. Even when I was in college, you couldn't really watch it anywhere. Now you can stream it on full wrestling or wherever. Would you watch it now? Yeah, is it, oh yeah, I watch is, a lot of it now. It's interesting to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I love it. So how about this? How, how um can I send my son to your, your wrestling camp? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How old is he? He's twenty three. No. He's too old. Well, yeah. Um your, your son Does he school. wrestle? Does he fight? What? He started wrestling at seventeen. Like okay. me. Yeah. yeah. But he fights. Yeah. He fights. fights. We're like five three eighteen year olds. He's what? We we coach five through eighteen year olds. Five five through eighteen year olds. It's not yeah. like a fight school. It's like yeah. A camp, put them like put them against academy. the five year olds. Oh my. <laughs> what? So in terms of in terms of the rumor of Masvidal, we heard that when you were going to fight Masvidal, that you actually went and wrestled him a few months prior to the UFC fight. Is that no, true? No, that wasn't a few months. That was a uh, no in two thousand. So I was initially an American Top Team guy because the only the only gym in. Columbia, Missouri, where I went to college, mm-hmm. was a um, was an American top team. Got so it was it. like, okay, I want to fight. Here's where I'm going to go. And so then in 2008, that's such a long time ago. 2008, I went to the American top, the main American top team for like two weeks. 
Um, so I hadn't even had a fight. I was zero and zero at that point. Mm. Hadn't even had a fight. Um, yeah, and I rolled him, and I I feel like I kind of had my way with him. And did going- so that was what I was poking on him about, you know, because like, you know, gym code. You're actually not supposed to talk about things that happen in the gym, but when you're trying to make a fight, I'm trying to to instigate, right, to get this guy angry enough to say, let's fight. So sometimes you got to do those type of things. That's part of it. Right? People yeah. should understand that. Did you yeah. guys ever talk during the the fight buildup? Like, hey, dude, sorry for having to talk about the gym stuff, or you're like, no. I don't care. No, fuck him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you do you like him now? Or you guys no, still now? fuck. I still don't like. Who we talking? Yeah. Who we talking about? Masvidal. Oh, you don't like Masvidal? No, he sucks. <laughs> okay, Why is that your okay, buddy? Okay, no, okay, okay. Now I, I don't like you. Okay, okay. Mm. I, I had to remember. I had to remember why you wouldn't like Masvidal. It took me a second. Now I know. Uh, he, uh, he looks at me. He's trying to get back on track. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, no. Mazadal, Mazadal, cool. I don't know him. I met him. I met him like once or twice. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know him. Yeah. No, I don't. Know but him did like you guys that. have a relationship at all before no. the fight? No, nothing. nothing. Just a little training at the gym. Yeah, and I yeah. Think, and so honestly, you. I mean, this is. So I went to. I fought my first fight against Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Um. So I got traded. First fight against Robbie Lawler. I thought I one more fight and I'm gonna fight for a title, right? And that was kind of what I wanted to do. So I went to London. It was Darren Till and George. And I thought Darren Till was going to win because he was ranked like two or three or something at that time, you know? So it's like I was kind of trying to instigate with Darren Till because I figured he's going to win that fight. And then I'm going to try to fight him. And then if I beat him, then I go for the title, you know? Then Till knocks him down right away, like 20 seconds in the fight, puts him on his butt. But then he came back and he lost, right? And so mm-hmm. it's like, okay, well, now I have to start with George because I want to fight him. And I thought, given what had happened... Uh, in the gym that this would be a relatively simple fight for me and unfortunately it did not go that way so so let's run let's let's play it out well yeah you he just knew you was gonna shoot uh yeah because you trained with him in the gym he just he just knew. yeah mm-hmm. just timed it yeah yeah it's really unfortunate <laughs> yeah yeah i, mean, I think it's what, one of those things uh i mean i've said this before but the way he threw the flying knee that way, no one else had really done that at that point in time. And so, like, we talk about sparring and, like, seeing things. Like, when you see something, you react because you, you're you trained to react a certain way. And so, usually, when people throw flying knees, they kind of, like, jump and they go more straight up as opposed to kind of, like, at you. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I've Makes seen sense. it. I've seen it. And that's, like, one of those things that should, he, Jorge Mazda, he couldn't do that again in a million years. Yeah, oh, it no. was just it was just timing and, and the point. way you shot you kind of like just le- you could see in the video you're yeah, like hitch. leaning over yeah. you're like just kind of hitching on it well i think when i see him coming at you know when i see him coming i'm yeah. like shit i gotta get try, try to get underneath it you know and i just Got didn't it. get there one thing you mentioned robbie lawler one thing about the robbie lawler fight you obviously won in a convincing mm-hmm. fashion but yeah. a lot of people said and herb dean and people came back after the fight saying oh no he let go too early yeah. or, oh no he didn't tap her oh no it mm-hmm. was a thumbs up is that true uh, I think you can watch his arm just go like this, like a limp arm. Yeah. Um, I think he was out for a second. I think it's one of those things that I'm sure you've been choked sometimes. Have you ever been choked? Yeah, he choked me last week. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's some times when you, when you get choked and then you wake up and you don't realize that you went out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was, I had him really tight and then Herb came towards me and I kind of relaxed a little bit. I think when I relaxed, he kind of wakes back up. And then, so by the time I let him all the way go, he was kind of like all the way back there and- didn't realize what happened. Yeah. But if you watch the sequence, he, yeah. his arm kind of drops. Did you ever talk to Herb Dean after the fight? Uh, no, about I don't that? think so. No? No. I mean, making the transition to coaching, who are some of like some of the top athletes you've seen come come in and out of your wrestling academy that go go on to become fighters? Yeah. Um, well, we have, I told you, I think fighting is a terrible job. So <laughs> we only have one guy. Uh, we have one guy who's fighting right now. Yeah. His name's Jordan Newman. He's 6-0 in Bellator. He wrestled for us as a high school kid. He won two national titles, Division three level wrestling. And now he's fighting. He has another fight, I think, this month, maybe, Northern Ireland with Bellator. So Bellator is, is going to, is they sold to PFLs, but they're going to keep the company. Around. They have like eight fights this year, I think. Overseas, what? overseas, yeah. they're going to use the name Bellator. In the U.S., they're going to use the name PFL. I think but that's how they're splitting They it. cut a whole bunch of fighters, though. They cut like 100 fighters. Yeah, they cut half the roster. Yeah. What, who they, what, like, what, what was the criteria for cutting fighters? I have no idea. Oh, okay. mm mm-hmm. Yeah, so no, we haven't had barely anyone fight because uh, I, I think fighting is a bad job. Uh, we have a lot of guys that have wrestling success. Yeah. yeah, but are you are you actually managing these guys too, or you're just like making no. sure their training's good? Uh, the wrestlers? Yeah. No, I just coach them wrestling. Just coach them. Yeah. You don't manage anyone? No. You don't want. There's get- there's no money in wrestling. So. so but you're no. going to get them into fighting, right? 
So no, like, I think it's a terrible job. But I know it's a terrible job, but somebody got to do it. Um, I mean, like, so like Jordan, the kid I brought up, like he won two national titles and uh, he's just kind of like over aggressive. I can't, I think it's like a small amygdala. If you got a small amygdala, you're a little too aggressive. You can Google that if you want to make sure. Yeah, I never heard that word before. Um, it's it's part, part of your brain. Uh, medulla abugada. No, med, uh, amygdala. Medulla abugada. No, yeah, yeah, amygdala. Water boy. Yeah, no, you got it. He, yeah, that's yeah, what he's talking a, about. No, no, he's he talking about water boy. Adam no, Sandler? amygdala. Amygdala. Yeah, yeah. the medulla abugada. No, that's no, two the different amygdala. It's amygdala. Two different parts. Tell me what the amygdala is. Google it. I don't have my phone. I didn't bring my phone in here. Why you didn't bring your phone in here? It's. A, I just know if you have it's a small from, amygdala, you're too aggressive. Small what? Look it up. Oh, amygdala. Right, Let's see. Is it, is it talking about the thing from Waterboy? A M Y. That's a that's a dude abugada. Yeah, that, but he's talking about the amygdala. Your, let me amygdala. Put me on Google. Put um, me on all Google. Right, all right, amygdala. All right. Did you find it? It's the component of your limbic system responsible for emotions and behavior side of memory formation. See, the, right here. Pull that thing up. Oh, there we go. So right where is where, where is that? The amygdala oh, participates in regulation of automatic and endocrine functions, decision making, adaptive. So I believe if you have a small one of these, then you're too aggressive. So that's so Jordan's too aggressive. So little he's too aggressive. Like smaller people have that. Like the littler people. Like my yeah. friend. My yeah, friend is like too. he's like really short guy. He got he got that problem. He's just yeah. really aggressive. They're very aggressive. And he's a little bitty guy. That's why yes. Chihuahuas are always yapping. Yeah, at they, yep. that's probably they have what a small medulla oblongata. Yeah. Jordan's not small, but he is very aggressive. So anyways, <laughs> he he finished college wrestling, and he was like, "This guy's gonna fight," you know. So it's like, okay, I'll help him. Set him up with Duke, and you know, kind of. Yeah. Advise him whenever I can, but we, I don't, there's not a lot of guys that fit the criteria for us. Is, how's it striking? Is it? He's pretty good. Does yeah. he use it or does he leg hump like you? Uh, he only legs hump sometimes. <laughs> only when he needs to. Well, what? yeah, you gotta win. You gotta, you know, I understand that. You gotta, a win's a win. A win's a win. Yeah. Listen, I had the leg hump in the beginning because I just didn't know how to do anything else. But you know how to strike now though. Well, I know how to strike them when I'm controlling them. So I, I had a, I think I had like five decisions in a row or something. But then I finally figured out how to elbow him. That was the key for me because when you can elbow him, you can cut him, and I don't, I don't need a lot of space to elbow him, right? Um, so remember, I won the Bellator title after 18 months of fighting. Like, I just didn't know how to do anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, eventually sure. I learned how to elbow him. Um, and, you know, the other thing was in the beginning, I thought I could just do straight jujitsu, But in fighting, it's hard to do just straight jujitsu on the ground. Uh, you need to punch them a whole bunch first. And then when you punch them a whole bunch, then they're willing to like give up more things because you've punched them enough times. So I was kind of had to figure that out. Yeah, see, this is, this is the thing, this is what my problem is. You know, I stopped watching MMA uh, years ago. And when- You don't I, watch MMA? I just thought, I'm getting back into it now. Okay. And so the thing, when I first heard about you, I just heard that you was this undefeated man, like the one badass motherfucker. When they came over to the UFC, I was like, oh shit. This, you know, and they traded you and stuff like that. But I, I had no idea you, you was like on a job training. You was learning- on, yeah on on the job I had no idea yeah so i and that was kind of why i had a bunch of decisions in their own that was kind of why because i just didn't have any skills so uh kind of like i said i wanted to go pro right away i skipped the amateur thing i figured out hey i'm either good at this or i'm not and then so when i had my third fight i'd literally been training for seven months and then bellator offered me the deal right and so it's like well i'm not gonna say no they just offered me 100 grand so uh, I don't know if I'm a better fighter, but I know I can take these dudes down and hold them down. That's no problem, right? So that's what I did. Like, I was just like yeah. figuring it out sense, I was yeah. in there. And then, yeah, it was my, uh, my 11th fight. And then my 11th fight to my, when I retired my 18th fight, I think I finished all of them but one because I finally figured out how to hurt them. Yeah. That was, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out how to hurt them in the beginning. And then eventually. It, so who was coaching you though? Cause, uh, you know, cause think about it. if I, if I was anywhere around you and you such a great wrestler, I would have been like, look, let's put your wrestler on the back yeah. burner for a little bit and let's get you Muay Thai. Yeah. And and I wouldn't, you, and you were, you know, you already knew a little bit about jujitsu, right? Yeah. Well, so the problem was in, when I started fighting the AT, there was an ATT in Columbia, but they only had a jujitsu coach. That was it, right? So I just did a whole bunch of jiu-jitsu. Uh, and then I moved to Arizona, and I didn't really have a great situation there. And then so I didn't move back to uh, Milwaukee to train at Rufus until my ninth fight, maybe. Yeah. So my ninth fight, that was when I became a full-time fighter. Yeah. But I hadn't been a full-time fighter before that at all because I was doing college wrestling, coaching, and everything else. Mm. And then I'm like, well, shit, I should probably do this like all the way. And now so, I understand. Yeah. Now I got the full picture. Yeah, so then, then I became a full-time fighter, and then... It took like maybe like six months to a year after that, and then it started clicking. Like, okay, here's how I. Bear, use hurt your people. influence to get me a time machine. I can go back in time, and what? 
Bird, time Bird, machine. Bird knows everybody. He, a this guy, well, he knows everybody. A billionaire? Bird, not, no. not a chance. Listen. Every we, dollar I have it. goes into this podcast and it goes into new t-shirts. So every time Rampage comes in here, he has a different Let's that's get a, a time t-shirt. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a that's a con shirt. It's kind of like a t-shirt. Yeah. He, he uh he 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 inspired this off the um Chuck Zito. Hey bye bye. You know Chuck Zito. And sounds it's familiar. Courtside at every you, you never see you never seen the um TV show. You might be too young. You never seen the TV show Oz? But, oh my God! Chuck so Zito listen, rolls I, in on the bike so Hulk Hogan. He sits I told at all you guys, you to all the MMA fights, all the UFC Bro, fights. Hey, Chuck bye Zito. bye. How you don't know From Chuck New Zito? York. Look at Chuck Zito right, right here. here. You seen him? Look at his look picture. At you seen him? Pull him up. Chuck Zito, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. This guy's the man. Right, that's look. Sylvester Stallone. No, it's Chuck, Chuck Zito. Zito. Look what at his shirt. Uh, I actually don't know that guy. Oh my oh God. My, yeah, we no, got to get you a history young, lesson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I told you, I'm simple, man. All I do is I watch, watch wrestling, wrestling and I watch fighting. And you buy Bitcoin. I buy a Bitcoin and I throw some disc golf and that's it. Oh, you that's got a championship it. in disc golf, right? Uh, I took second to amateur nationals. That's amazing. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Uh, I don't even know ben what the Askren. fuck that is. Do you disc ever golf? play disc golf? It's like lawn bowling. Oh, no. It's, yeah. I it's like, no, I don't what? know what the fuck that is. It's like lawn bowling. It's uh, uh so a frisbee is like bigger, a disc is like smaller and more condensed. That's when you shoot them? You throw mm -hmm. them? No, no, you throw But you have to have a 12 gauge. And you shoot it. Like ski shooting. No, you throw yeah. them. Throw them in. There's a chain, there's chain. You love it, it has chains. Oh, this shit yeah, right here? This thing right here. Yeah. What is that? That's this. That's the basket. That's well, the why, basket. Oh, yeah. This it? is what you have a championship in? Well, I took second. I didn't well, win. Well, why do they call it golf? Where's the Where's the golf? Well, club? you start at the tee box, and then as many throws as it takes to get in the basket. That's how long it takes. So I actually what's the chains for? That's That's the goal. Hey, that's Ram, that's you, like, just, that's the you started the tee tee box. Tee box. Yeah. You know, only tee I like is tit tee. Fuck that shit, man. What, that shit. Look. What? The <laughs> yeah, what are you playing over there? I built twenty three hole disc golf course at my house. Uh -huh. A what? I built a twenty three hole disc golf course at my house. Is that that popular? Well, I like it, so I'm just going to do the things I like. So, is, I, so you play disc golf by yourself every day at your house? No, nah, not every day. You have a team? No. So I don't really like a lot of people, so I only invite <laughs> certain people so over. you built a disc golf course at your house, yes. and you go back there and you just throw the discs? Yeah. How many right. acres is your house? I have 10 acres. Oh, my God. He's yeah. a man right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, he did it right. He did it right. Yeah. You didn't yeah. see the video of him training for Jake Paul. He looked like Rocky Balboa. He's cutting That was, wood. unfortunately, if I would have won, yeah. that would have been like the most classic uh, highlight video of all time. Yeah, hype video. Because, hey, can you pull that up? Rampage will uh, love it. He's never it had like this. five million views or something. The best video I've ever watched. It's on your YouTube. Uh, I think I just had Twitter and Instagram. But I um, when I watched, I had that, a I really really good um camera guy. His name was John. Mm. Um, he he came back and did my vlogs for this fight and did everything, and he was awesome. I remember when this dropped. I, I called Jake. I said, "Yo, man, this guy's he, he's coming for you." Yeah, he he owes yeah. me on this one. Yeah, so this was literally, hold on, pause, press pause. So literally, it snowed like- uh, Full screen it. Yeah, it snowed like 10 inches that day. And I said, John, let's freaking do this. And he came over and we did this and it was kind of a, it turned out to be a hit. It would have been more of a hit Is if I actually would have won. Oh, yeah. That's my house. Wow. So, oh, I love the song. Yeah, let's get you pumped up. This is some real Rocky music here. But you weren't really training, right? You're messing around? Yeah, I was messing around. It was kind of hard though. The one, the one scene at the end. This was actually harder than I thought. I got my kids on the sled running up the hill, and uh, <laughs> there was a uh, the one scene at the end where I run up the hill, um, chopping wood. Did you really chop that tree down? Yeah. How long did that take you to chop a tree? Well, I chainsawed the other side, so that oh, side took me like God, five minutes. <laughs> Tell me the deleted scenes. Oh yeah, oh, that's cool, man. Boom. Uh, but the one scene at the end. Oh yeah, this is hilarious. This is. Was she mad you were chopping down her tree? <laughs> no, the outside's my domain. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> Have you guys watched the old Rocky? Like, we, we yeah. literally stole the words word for word here. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you could be an actor. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. No, you'd be great. It's like a Napoleon Dynamite part two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he got that look. He's funny, bro. Yeah, you could be. An yeah, actor, you could bro. be an that actor. Was, that was good. Look at this. Yeah, you put thought into this video. Yeah, bro. There was five. Oh, I see why I got five bro? million. Was that John? Oh, that's actually Jordan Newman. That's my buddy. Uh, who's that holding pants for you? That's Jim Savage. Uh, fire him. Yeah, that, that ain't gonna work. What is this? Cement. Yeah, it's well. It's a, that's a salt bag, but that's kind of what. They have this going on in the uh, yeah in the Rocky video. <laughs> What's up with the pad work? 
Who was your boxing coach for that fight? Uh, you know what? I, I had a coaching by committee. I brought in this guy, Canine. He was wild. Was he a good coach? Well, he's all right. I liked him a lot. Yeah, this was a great video. This Just is the one where I had to yeah. rub this hill like five times for him to get it, and it's steep as shit, uh, and there's tension of snow. That was actually kind of hard. And so it was good training. So you see the disc golf, that's the disc golf hole in the background. Uh, and why you got holes in your in your, in your your sweats? That's like really cold out there. <laughs> you couldn't get some some other sweats? That's all I... That's how he gets down. He's a wrestler. Yeah. Is this like the Philadelphia stairs? No, this is go watch the scene. Go watch the scene yeah, from yeah, Rocky Four. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. We, co we copied it like scene for scene. Yeah, he he must didn't see it because that's when he was training in Russia. Oh, yeah, that's showing. that's what we stole. It. We stole really scene for scene. Oh, that was that good. Movie. You did a good job. Yeah, you did a good job. I told you. I told you about this video yesterday. And you said, I ain't watching no Rocky Balboa. Yeah, yeah. I said, I ain't watching that shit. No, yeah. no I'm joking. No, now I, was, he enjoys uh, it. I was supposed to watch it when I, I was supposed to watch it when I did um, cardio this morning, but I forgot. See, my, my Did you pumped up? Yeah. Did you did cardio like this it. morning? Yeah, I went what, to What, running? No, I just I do stairs. Okay. Stair master. I do like that one out there? No, no, no. I went to the um gym in, in okay. Huntington Beach. I do okay. like um every morning I do like a an hour of stair master. Really? Yeah, because it's really good for your cardio. Nice. And then when I get my weight down a little bit more, I'm going to start running. I'm gonna start running like okay. three miles. Nice. But I just want you to know before we get out of here, whenever because he be trying to end it real fast, mm -hmm. so I don't, so I don't snitch on him. Nah, I got two more things I gotta ask. Oh yeah, can I'm I pee though? Are we? Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, 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 yeah. We're about right. to we're about to wrap this thing up real quick. Well, no, let me pee real quick. Then then. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah go, 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 go as long as you want. Go pee and come back, and I got two yeah. more things asking. This is amazing. I was gonna snitch on you. What? What are you gonna say? Uh, uh, I was gonna snitch on. I'm telling him that you you was rooting for Jake Paul, and I was rooting for him. He don't need to know. Well, I think I think I think it's. He don't need to know. I think it's fair that he. I think he should because, know. Listen, here's the problem with him. You can even see when he was hitting pads, he's like this and like this, bro. He's one of the most decorated wrestlers of all time. I thought I, that's a little a little bottom decky. I thought he was gonna come in and like really really box and slip on Jake. He went like this, like he was gonna shoot on him. I was. He had he had the wrong training. Yeah, he had the. So I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell him no, you that don't need you, to say I think I do need you don't to say anything. Don't say anything. Oh, he's one of the most decorated wrestlers of all time. I've been on the phone with this guy for two weeks to get him in this place. No. Are we rolling? Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, you're on camera the whole time. He's texting me when you're on your phone and he's looking at you. The camera's on you, so it just looks like you're texting. So just keep that in mind. Just wait till, uh, like... Yeah, I was, I, my bad. I was doing some business. It's fine. So I know these are long, but just because he's the main dude, he's looking at you when they're talking. So every time he looks at you, the camera switches to you and you're texting. No way. Yeah, just keep that in mind. I don't like you no more. Yo, I got to tell you something before he says no, anything. No, 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 were, no, 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 no. We got on camera. It's all rolling. We got on camera. We got on camera. No, 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 no trailed the way for wrestlers in general yeah. to figure out how to be great. Um, this guy was rooting for Jake Paul in the boxing fight. I just, <laughs> <laughs> what a butthole. Hey. And, and, and I just I want to tell you. Him. that hey. You probably were though too. No, 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 no I was rooting for you. No. And that's why he, he said probably was. No, he was I played neutral Paul. on all Jake Paul fights. Him and Jake, him and Jake Paul, they, they're, they're, they're best friends. He they're buddies? Them. Yeah. He FaceTimes them How did you guys become buddies? Uh, Jake was first starting out and uh, I took him to my paintball park and I told him like this dude was about to start doing music and I'm like yo we got to get you a concert so I rented out a water park and we threw a massive concert and he came out with songs and then I went on tour with him and what then, you went on tour with him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh I can't believe you yeah and then yeah. and then he did music and then he was starting to do fighting and I introduced him to Tyrone Woodley wait he did wait Jake and Tyrone knew each other beforehand I introduced Tyrone Woodley to Jake Paul on TMZ live Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's okay. a lot of history there. Bro, he, he he introduced me to him. One, I haven't seen Bear in a while. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, you know, talk going around. He said, uh, you want to fight Jake Paul? I'm like, man, I'm too fat to fight Jake Paul. I got to lose 100 pounds to fight him. Mm -hmm. And he called Jake Paul right there on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. So he he's, he's he's good friends with, with Jake my Paul. My homie Jake Paul. It's on yeah, TMZ. You know my homie Bear. And he said, hey, my homie Jake Paul, which right. is his brother, right. correct? Yep. Wants me to train him and help him for boxing. I did not know that. Yeah, this was years ago. Because wow. Jake was a uh, Jake was really good to me when he was first starting off. He was the most watched dude on the internet. He was like the Mr. Beast at the time on YouTube. Really? Yeah. So and you know who's telling the truth. I was rooting for you. No, he no, was no, rooting no. For Jake. I believe Listen, you. Thank Listen, you, bro. Yes. Okay. Uh, you guys have a different MMA, bond. MMA you guys, guys have stick belts. together. I just want to say something. 
I I literally had you at the top of my list of people that I wanted on this show because of you being one of the best world-class wrestlers of all time in the U.S. and as well being one of the greatest MMA competitors when it comes to wrestling, mm -hmm. showing what it could do. And he the whole time was saying, we should get Jake Paul on the show. And I said, no, 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 no. What no, the no. fuck I want with Jake Paul? Listen, when you went to, listen, real talk, real talk, no cap. When you went yeah. to the restroom, he said, yeah, I believe you. I think that GSP will smoke him in wrestling no, no, and no, no, Triple no, no. C. No, stop. And Triple C. He triple said, C is a 135 pounder. That's Henry what I kid. told him. Stop. No, Henry would do damage against you, right? See that? In wrestling? Yeah. See? What? No. Well, I don't Bro, know. he's 135. I don't know. I just want to make you sure. Should, I think you should Are show you him. Are you crazy? I don't, you hey, said hey, take that him to the man and show him what Listen, I love Henry. He's an elite wrestler, but I have 50 pounds on him. Exactly. That's why I told him he don't understand. Can hey, you stop can saying you take I don't him, understand? I, I, I you don't, understand? You don't understand. Yeah, you don't can understand. you stop saying that? You're going to make hey, He doesn't understand. Take him out there on the mat. Take, take Bear out there on the mat and show him. We'll wrestle. Take, we'll wrestle. Right, Tell good, him what you, you said about GSP before we move on. I said that. I he said, said that, GSP would probably be able to submit you in three minutes. I said, no chance. No way. I yeah. didn't say that. Now he's making stuff up. Then I what was, did you say? I, what I was saying, what I said was, I brought up that GSP thing just so I can. Wasn't talk, GSP going to grapple Nate Diaz or Nick Diaz? Something, something like but that. But that never happened, right? Never happened. Mm. See, I told him, I brought up GSP so I could talk you into doing a super fight where we all can make money. There we go. Thank you. So now can we move on from this? Yes, we move on. Truth. Truth. Get the hell out. So listen, what, what are your thoughts on Michael Chandler holding out for the Conor McGregor fight since that's your um, boy? Man, I don't love it. Really? Well, Is he wasting just, his prime? Yeah. Now, you know, I think, uh, I don't have my phone or anything in front of me, but he hasn't fought. It's been kind of a long time, you know? And I think there's no guarantee that Conor's going to come back. I almost feel like Conor's trying to wait him out um, and get a different fight for himself. But, yeah, I just think there's no guarantee. And I, I think, honestly, if I were Chandler, I would have said, hey, let me give me someone else. And whenever Connor's ready to fight, I'll fight him. Hmm. But I'm not going to sit around and play with my dinghy and not fight anyone. Oh, so he's not going to fight him until Connor's ready? That's what I've heard. Well, yeah. They, I mean, they haven't officially announced anything at this point. Um, I think Connor said summer, but now they're saying fall. And so I think Michael's going to be on the bench like two years. And, you know, I think he's, he's two years younger than me. So he's 37. Um, and you guys have seen it. Have you seen that insane stat about um, 170 under? So, okay. So Tyron, Tyron's the only one that has two wins. 170 pounds and under, if they're above, 35 or above, they're like two and 36 in title fights. But one of the guys he won was also above 35 on that stat. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was yeah. Con, no, uh, Maya. Do you mean Maya? Yeah. No, no, no. It was so. so, so I don't, Maya. I don't see, I, Maya. Yeah. I don't see Connor coming back and fight. The guy is worth too much money. Why he want to put in a hard training camp? I think camp? he's having fun playing with Michael Chandler. It's, it's not, it's not the fight. Right. It's not the fight. On. Yeah. It's the training camp. It's not the fight. It's the yes, training camp that, that makes you, when you got all that money, like, wow, I want to put, you know how hard a training camp is? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, you don't know. I, I don't, but yeah, I, I know you don't But know. you've been saying a lot to me lately about, it's not, and you said it this morning on the way to breakfast. It's not about fighting. Everybody wants to still yeah. fight. It's who wants to do the training camp. Yes, yeah. that's it for that's sure. sure. What yeah. what makes the training camp so hard for the fans and the community watching this? You want to take you want to take this one? Yeah. Right. Well, I just think too, if you're gonna like, so especially when you've established that level of credibility, he won a world title. You don't want to come look like a schmuck, right? And so if you're gonna do it right, do it really right. It's like you're gonna be doing every single thing right. You're not gonna be partying, drinking. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, for I don't know probably a twelve week period. Like you're gonna be not missing any workouts. You're gonna really really grind it out. So for me, what makes training camp um, more tough is you have to train even when you really don't want to. Yeah. Say say you get hurt. Say you got like a little pain or something like that. You still have to go to the gym and do yes. something. And, and what I when what I did <laughs> in my career, I trained three times a day and mm -hmm. was, was like a total of six hours a day. And then yeah. Fridays I probably trained twice, and Saturdays I trained once. Then I then I take the whole Sunday off. That was my training camp, and right. it was tough. Like I hated training, but I trained really hard. Mm -hmm. And then when I trained, I trained really hard because the last thing I wanted was to be embarrassing or get my ass kicked in front of everybody. Who likes to lose? So people people think that's because I didn't like training. That I didn't train hard. I, mm -hmm. I, I I've, throughout my career I've trained hard, very hard. So that's yeah. what's up. You got to do it. Even when yeah. you, when you wake up in the morning, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I put my feet on the on the floor to stand up, and I can feel my body like oh. And I didn't take PEDs. I heard like some there are things mm -hmm. that you can take that um, like uh, keeps you from being sore, keep you from train, keep you to train harder. And so I, did, yeah, I never no, I never took the internet stuff. Got it. I, throughout my career, the only yeah. time I ever took something was after I fought John Jones. Got it. But uh, yeah. uh, there was doctor prescribed. But other than that, I didn't. I really didn't even take supplements 
my most of my career. Yeah. I wish I would have learned more about supplements. So I didn't know much about it. So it's just really hard, and you everything hurts, and you still got to go train, and it hurts until you warm up. Yeah, that's when you said like uh, we were talking about someone still training. It's like okay, so I train. But if I'm not really fighting or really competing, well, yeah. if I train hard today and I feel sore tomorrow, I'm going to work out, but I'm just going to work out like not hard. I'm going to do yeah. something light, you know, because then I'll feel better the next day. Then the next day I'll kind of go hard, you know, and if I'm getting too tired, well, I don't have to fight. So uh, I'm done. Yeah. But you know did, what I'm saying? Were you your own coach though? No, no, no. Because my coach. No, I'm saying right now. I'm saying right oh, now. Oh, okay. Right I'm now. Sorry, if sorry. You, okay. Yeah. If you're not I'm in bad. a training camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like just training for fun. Like when you're older, it's like, well, oh, yeah. if you're tired, you just. <laughs> you know, take the okay. next day off or take makes a light, sense. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, makes yeah sense. but you have your training camp. Yeah, there are no, day, no days off. You got to do it right. Yeah, and, 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 and wrestlers have the best cardio, so I can imagine those training camps yeah. for that to make mm-hmm. weight. And, and a lot of coaches are fucking control freaks, so even if you are injured or hurt or something, they don't want to hear it. I, I've learned, I learned in college wrestling that your coaches, that no, nobody cares about your pain. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody cares. Like, Where did you wrestle in college? Last in junior college. Oh, yeah, in California? Yeah. yeah. They had a really good program. Yeah, they had a really good program. I don't think they do it anymore, right? I don't know. I, 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 you know what? I got injured, mm-hmm. and they just, they wouldn't even take me to the hospital. What? Yeah, I turned my back against them. I'm like, fuck them. Fuck them. Really? Really. I, I, I came into MMA with a um, with an injury. I just let it heal up. I, mm-hmm. I, I think I, I popped my, um, I don't know what it was. They never took me to the hospital. Okay. I, I let it heal up on his own. I was, Who else was on your team there? Was it like TJ Williams? Or yeah, something? TJ yeah. Williams on my team. Uh-huh. He was really good. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin. He was, oh yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he's I, still, no, 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 he no, no, no. He WWE came back. still. Yeah, yeah. No, he had, no. You know what? He had came back and was wrestling with us. He, I think he was already. Okay. He had already gone. I can't remember Sonny. Sonny. I can't remember Sonny's last name. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, uh, he went to Iowa State. Sonny Marchetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot. We had a lot. Yeah, of they had a good program. Yeah, we had a lot of monsters on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. As we come to to wrap this up, you know, all joking aside, Ben, I know I've been on your on your head trying to get you on this show for a few mm-hmm. months now, and I I do want to say thank you for coming on here. And as a guy who's been a decorated MMA champion and one of the best wrestlers the U.S. has ever seen. I definitely want to give you your flowers for that. I know the internet and the things you have to deal with here and there are not always the easiest. No, but I, don't, you, I don't read the comments. You so. put on one of the craziest it's not, it's not a big deal. Good. Um, the last two or three things I just want to touch on is who is on your Mount Rushmore of the best trash talkers in the MMA Ooh. world? Well, a Prime Connor was so good. He was hilarious. Um, you know, I was actually thinking of you earlier with the chain and uh, the Ken Shamrock uh, interview you guys are doing. Um, you, and I, I guess I'm curious, and I'm just going to ask you, is like, did someone tell you to do that? Like your gimmick with, you did the howl thing and you had the chain, or was you just made that up on your own? I've been howling since I watched the movie um, Team What? Wolf. Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, no. My sister, my sister actually told me not to come. And she told me not to howl while I was fighting in MMA. Really? She's embarrassed about it. I'm like, fuck that. I'm howling. People I'm, love that shit. Yeah. I've been a werewolf since I saw the movie Team Wolf. <laughs> That's I'm so t- funny. I'll tell you a story. The first time when I knew I was good at howling, I was riding my bike around the neighborhood, and I was riding, and I was howling while I was riding the bike. Oh and, my and I stopped by this la- older lady house in the neighborhood, Miss Johnson. I saw her taking her groceries out of the, mm-hmm. out of her trunk, so I stopped to help her with her groceries. Mm-hmm. And she said, did you hear that? I was like, hear what, Miss Johnson? She said, it's a pack of wolves coming. And I was like, really? She said, yeah. You, you didn't? What you mean you didn't hear it? Because we... In my in uh-huh. my neighborhood, right there by my house, right behind it was like a ditch and it yeah. was woods. It was like trees and you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she probably thought it was a bunch of uh, dogs oh or something. I happened to across it. That was me, Miss Johnson. She said, "Really? That was you?" I'm like, "Yeah." She said, "Oh my god! Thank God! I, that sounded real." And then I was like, "Oh shit! I'm a fucking wolf." And so, uh-huh. I, and then I, I wrote a I wrote a chain because you know remember I told you I started wrestling late. Uh huh. And my first year, I, I wasn't even a starter. I was just like they, my coaches gave me matches and I lost five in a row. Uh-huh. And my little brother came and brought me the chain and said, huh, wear this. If you wear this chain, you intimidate your opponents. And sure enough, I did. And I, really? I, I went undefeated until freestyle. What? Yeah, true story. You can ask oh. my little brother. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, sorry to end. So I said, Connor, um, who else? I don't know. No one else? Chael Shannon was a good. Chael, Chael, oh, yeah. Chael Tito, was great. Tito was a good. Dude. What do you think? Tito was pretty funny. I, you know who I was? It's hilarious. I was watching a Ken Shamrock interview. Ken Shamrock had to know what Tito's shirt said, but he was acting like he didn't know what it said. 
I don't, I don't, I don't you remember. remember? I remember he used to wear shirts. It said, it said, Gay Metzger is my bitch. Because the guy's yeah. name was Guy Metzger, but yeah. you wrote Gay Metzger yeah. is my bitch. Yeah. And Ken was acting like he didn't remember what it said, but he had to remember what it said. Yeah, he was he was pretty. I remember him. That being was pretty good. Shamrock like that. was pretty good at talking to. Yeah. yeah. He had a, good, a whole vibe mm-hmm. with his team. Yeah. As we look at the, the last. You know, as we wrap this up, as we look at the landscape of these new fighters coming over and you being one of the first guys to be that like exclusive trade, you know, Bellator yeah. gets this, one gets that, UFC gets this. We see Michael Venom Page coming over to the UFC. Do you think that he's yeah. too old to be as dominant or be a world champion? Do you think that he's going to be able to come get the belt, especially fighting against yeah. a guy like Holland? Um, well, I don't even think he won the belt in Bellator, did he? No, I don't think he ever had a belt. I don't think so. So, yeah, I mean, he's older. He's like 37. And you, you look at that stat we just talked about where the guy, older guys just aren't very good anymore. Mm-hmm. That just Everyone gets old, and they're just not as good as when they're old as when they were young. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in technology, and I believe that in the future, there's going to be something that will keep athletes younger and, and, and doing the sports they love yeah. longer. I tell you, since I started doing stem cells with Bioaccelerator, I've got, I feel yeah. a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I did some also, and I had – Huge improvement in my shoulder. And you feel better, don't you? Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. I had this pain in my shoulder. So I told you I went to Ways to Well in Texas. I had this pain back here. Um, so this was maybe two years ago when I went for the first time. But just all I was put when I was pushing, when I was throwing, there's always pain. And I got the stem cell. And then like 10 days later, I was walking with my kid. My kid said, throw this rock or something. You know, I, I threw it. I'm like, oh, that, that doesn't hurt anymore. Like, you holy got, shit, it went away. Bro, bro, you got lucky. My first time doing stem cells was here in California, and I think I got ripped off. It, oh, really? It, it hurt my knee even even worse. Really? Yeah. Then Frank Mir, Frank Mir, man, I love that guy. He put me on. He said, man, no, go to um, Columbia by yeah. Accelerator. It's, it's, it's great. They take Did you have injuries that they uh, healed up? Yeah, my, my, my hand healed up instantly like really two days later because I, I had like a maybe like a little small fracture uh-huh. to a hand specialist yeah and they just put me in the cast with nothing they could really do yeah and then i when i got when i went there i got shot in my shoulder and both my knees and in my hand uh-huh. and i got iv yeah and my i noticed my hand healed up um wow. two 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 days later but to be honest my knee was so bad and mm-hmm. they and they gave me like instructions to keep moving and stuff yeah. like that and i didn't really like believe Uh-oh. them so my knee was hurting for like like three or four days and I, I was scared it was going to be like that forever. And then, then the doctor was like, um, did you move? Did you keep moving? I was like, I moved it a little bit. I said, no, we were serious. You got to keep moving it. So you get in your knee, yeah. you got to keep moving it. But my shoulder, they told me uh-huh. to keep moving everything. I didn't really keep moving my shoulder, but it healed up. Okay. Like I had a torn nice. rotator cuff, but my knee, I should have... I should have listened to him. So next time, after my fight, I'm going to go get it again. Yeah. I'm going to get the shot, and I'm going to keep moving. But uh, on the 17th, I'm going to go just get the IVs to nice. top me up for my fight. So I think uh, I think Venom Page will have some fun fights. I think he's got some tricky stuff. But mm-hmm. is he going to make a run at the title? I would be surprised if that was the case. He's got an amazing... Uh, what? Or what, what weight class is he? 170, right? Who's the champion at that weight class? Fighting Holland. I mean, uh, the champion right now is... Uh... Leon. Edwards. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah, but, be tough fight. but they, that fight is still not, I don't think the fight's done yet. That's why I was Ooh, trying to remember. Leon and whoever he's who going to fight. Leon's going to fight. That's yeah, it should be remember. Bilal, yeah, but they're be trying Bilal. to be stingy with Bilal because they don't like him. Or so, so Venom, he's in a really tough um, weight class, huh? Yeah, I mean, like yeah, I mean he, yeah, let's everybody. see. So he actually lost to one of the guys I beat in Bellator, Douglas Lima. Yeah, I saw that uh, fight. That was, yeah, that was, it was in Chicago. I was actually at the fight also where he, he got knocked out. It was like a leg kick, and then he was kind of going down. and yeah, like, like a, Up, you know, up yeah, or was, hammer or something. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird. Did he lose one other fight in Bellator, or is that his only loss? I think that's the only one I've seen him lose. Yeah, I mean, the okay. thing is, is that when he was coming over, I think the rumor was that he was going to fight Gilbert Burns. Okay, that'd be a tough fight yeah, for him. Yeah, fight. and then I don't think that that fight happened. And mm-hmm. then I think the Bilal fight, they don't know who, they don't know if he's going to fight Edward. Bilal should be fighting for a title. He's won he like be seven for or eight So I think there was a lot of mix up of who this guy was going to fight when he came over. And now yeah. MVP, obviously they gave him the fight. Yeah. But before we go to put the rumors aside, you're not fighting Maz at all 300, right? No. We heard that. Listen, if they said that ben, they offered you. You fight, they didn't offer me. I would, if they said, I'm not going to, I told you I'm not fighting again, unless it's fucking George Maz at all. Fight him for Jorge sure. Jorge Masvidal, you'll fight him. Yes, I would fight him. In the UFC. Listen, there's not a lot of times in life where you get to get one back that you fucked up in your life. Uh, so, yeah. I That's your only that. loss, huh? I have two, so, I lost to Damon Maya. I have two. I'm 19 and two. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any way George would say yes. I heard. I saw he was really fat. There's a video of him, and he looked very plump. Well, he, plump. he, hasn't, been, he hasn't been fighting, huh? He's been put on no, his own He show. retired. Plump. Oh. Yeah, he looked plump. Yeah, I don't know. 
That would so, be an insane. That would be an insane rematch at three hundred. Yeah. I got a but, question no. for you. Yeah. So, um, would you would you train fighters wrestling? Some fighters came to you and said, "Hey, man, I'm yeah, gonna, you would do that." Yeah. So I don't think I would ever want to do like a MMA. You know, you're asking about like an MMA gym where I'm training yeah. them all the time. But like, if there was a few high level uh, fighters and you said, "Hey, I, I need some help with my wrestling or grappling or something like that," then yeah, I think I would enjoy that. What would you charge weekly? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. You, you just, you know, you just think about it. It depends on who they are right? and how rich. Yeah. Say if Conor McGregor came to you, Conor McGregor, yeah, rich boy. And- I probably could have helped Conor with the Khabib fight because there were uh, there's very limited people who can put the pressure that Khabib did, and I was kind of good at that. But yeah, I, I probably depends on who they are. Most MMA fighters don't make a lot of money, so you can't yeah. charge that much. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And as we as we go to wrap this up. I just want to say thank you one more time because mm-hmm. I do know it was a mission for you to get out of here. You left a wrestling tournament, came straight here last yes, night. Sir. Respect. Red Eye landed, came on the show. He's going right back on a flight in the next 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I know the MMA community and the combat sports community is going to love this. We're trying to give them the best guest. Mm-hmm. Give him his flowers. We, we have to give you your flowers because right now, I think one of the coolest things right now that we're experiencing is as we're having these conversations with elite athletes and legends and iconic names is that people are really getting to see a good side of them. Yeah. They're getting to be able to tell their story and say it the way they want, mm-hmm. unbiased. Yeah, we like to joke around, but we're doing this for fun and we're doing this just to have a nice conversation, a good platform for people. Yeah, so awesome. Appreciate you. I want to say thank me. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one thing also too, Rampage, the chains Rampage is wearing for everybody out there. If you guys use the promo code podcast15, you can get 15% off site wide at jackson.com. These are our brand new eight millimeter and 10 millimeter Cuban link chains. They look phenomenal. They have a brand new class, sweat proof, perfect for date night, perfect for the gym, perfect to go out. Obviously, we don't sell the chain rampage. Yeah, wares. how long do you sell that brand? God, that's that's like at least two hundred grand. The white gold yeah. one that we're making for rampage, that's yeah. at least two two three hundred grand. Yeah, yeah you solid white for, gold for his fight coming up. We might have to make one for him. I don't know if I give it to him, he's probably gonna end up losing it. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't don't even worry about. It. Don't even worry about. It. I already I'm already working on getting one made. But this is what I want to ask you though. Uh, one of the girls I just started dating. <laughs> one of them, multiple. Oh. I'm a single man. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, I'm not uh, married like you. Here we so, go. Listen. Have you been married? Yeah, I was married. Oh, okay. I married a Japanese lady. Oh, really? Yeah. She was when you were in Pride? Yeah. She was super nice. Okay. You never, you, did you ever see my fight when I fought Vanilla? I got my ass kicked? Uh, I'm sure I've seen I watched a lot of this stuff, so I'm there, sure I, I got a lot it. of shit for being on the telephone when they were doing the National Anthem. Uh-huh. That's the time when I, I proposed to her on the phone. They didn't tell me that they was going to do the National Anthem. That's my first time ever fighting for the belt. Whoa. If I would have won that fight, I would have been the youngest champion in MMA. Really? Yeah. How old are you? 24, 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah, crazy. So, so the one, the girl I just started dating, she's really nice, and I like her. She's very beautiful, and she asked me for that uh, that rampage shirt you made and a, and, a, and a Jackson hoodie, a small one. Can I? You know, I know you give away a lot of stuff. I hate asking you for stuff. I actually pay for it, but but this girl, she's really nice. Do Do you have any more of that stuff? Like the rampage shirt, whatever the girl is, and whatever she wants, she can have. As long as you're happy and you show up here on time and she doesn't take you overseas for a vacation. No, no, no. I'll bring her here so you can meet her. So she's a really nice girl. This guy brings a new girl to the studio every week. Don't, it's Cap. Don't, it's cap. don't. They're recording. Yeah, that's, they need to know. They hate him. He, they like, need it. Yeah, Bro, because you need to stay focused on the fight. This guy lost 30 pounds. He shows up to a fight. He looks like Michael B. Jordan now. And now all he wants to do is go talk to girls. What? Last night I saw him salsa dancing at La Vida on 17th. <laughs> yeah, you were good yes, cardio. Yes, that's why he good left. Good cardio. That's why he yeah. left. He pulled a cap. Yeah, this dude had like these little Spanish shoes on. Looked like Antonio Banderas running around the dance floor. So, so how is married life? I think about maybe one day getting uh, married again. I don't know. Mine's really good. How long you been know. married? Uh, we're at almost 14 years. Damn. Yeah. How old are you? 39. So we, I got married when I was 25. That's when I got married around. Yeah, she was in the video. You just saw her in the yeah. video. Amy, yeah, I know she's, she's great. Beautiful. So she's was she? She was a uh, your high school sweetheart. No, uh, we met. I was I I had graduated college just by a couple months. I met her like probably five months after I graduated college. She was a senior. Oh, uh, but you yeah. met her in person. You didn't meet her on a dating site. No, no dating sites. Uh, make you listen. That's so funny because you're kind of old like me. We didn't have Tinder or whatnot. Right, right, right. And so literally, a bunch of the high school kids I coached were like the other day, like. How'd you do it? It's like, well, you just went up to a girl and you just talked to her. Old like, school. Yeah. Hey, how are you? You know, like that's what you had to do because there was no dating apps. Man. Like, oh my God, that's so weird. I'm like, what's so weird about that? You just walk up to a girl and you say <laughs> hi. Like, I know. They, they don't do it like that. No. no? So, it's crazy. Yeah. It's different. different how do you time. do it? How do you meet a girl? 
I got see, her DM. I'm ugly, so I got to sneak up on them. They, they got to see my they got to see my personality. You flank them? I flank them. They got to uh, see my person. I got I keep girls laughing because the more they laugh, the more their eyes are closed. They don't look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but back in the day, you actually had to go uh, talk to girls. I don't know if you're, you might not be old enough to remember that. I, tr- I try to stay out of you the whole thing. You probably had Tinder. Team. It's too much. I need to stay focused on the business. Okay. Mike, listen, you need you need the opposite sex. No, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I have a girl. You don't need the same sex. You need the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? It's very important. That's in California. They let you do anything you want. Now. I know. So, listen, don't be judging own. him. I'm don't judge. This, listen, to each his own. To each yeah. his own. You guys yeah. can do what you want to do. But. Ever since he got in shape and he's sparring every day, now he's real like, he's very confident with his well, jokes. Well, it's, it's a little different. Yeah. You know, when you get that fight mindset, he's probably like changed a little oh, bit. Oh, bro, he tries to fight me every day. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it boosts your testosterone. And you, yeah. and your what? Testosterone. <laughs> All right, on that note, listen, Jackson Podcast, 100,000 subscribers. We cannot thank you enough. We're having barbershop talk here. We just chill. We let the conversation flow, and we give you guys it raw, rugged, and real. I bet you do give yes, it raw. Sir. Oh, yes, sir. Sir. oh, hello, Rampage. I knew you were going to bite on that. Oh. Man, the well, why'd you there. say that? I just throw the bait out there. I know he, he'll take it. He, 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 anything. He'll just yeah, baby, it. I like it raw. <laughs> That's oh it. God. We out. Ben Asker and Rampage Jackson. I'm Bear Thank you, guys.